Guys, it's so good to see you. How are you doing? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. My name is Bob. I am one of the people from the Wolf Den Podcast joining me today. It's a very special day. You're never going to believe this. It's Will. Hey. How you guys hey, doing? I got d- scared because I saw the OBS crash screen flash real quick, mm-hmm. and then our position switched in Discord. Like, I uh, was on the bottom, and now I'm on top. So I got uh, real nervous we were going to have technical difficulties right away. If you'd, li- if you'd like, if you, I could just I could do that again. <laughs> okay. No, I wasn't. I, <laughs> All look, I did, I just disabled my virtual camera because sometimes that screws with stuff, but maybe I'll leave it yeah. on until it screws with stuff. Okay. Uh, anyway, guys, there's so much to talk about today. The main thing I want to talk about is uh, this Reddit thread about all of the Nintendo franchises that we don't even know anything about anymore. Like, they just stopped talking about Yes. Them. And I think this chart left some out, but we'll get to that when we get to um, the story. This is why I'm happy you're here, Will. Um, today, just now... Uh, I may I, for, for, I I decided to take my little uh my, my little cold drink cups for a spin. So I ha- I have these uh I have like hot paper, cu- you know, like like disposable coffee cups for when I like gotta gotta right. run or like somebody's <laughs> over. And I'm like, oh, you're leaving? Well, do you want a coffee? And I can like make them a little coffee and make it like a coffee shop. So yeah, I I needed to get more, so I decided I would also get cold ones. Look, it's got a little sippy cup. It's got a little sippy top. Ooh. Now this, this is a very special drink. Now on, on another another Reddit special. Now a few <laughs> weeks ago on on the on R slash espresso, people were taking mm-hmm. their espresso shots, pouring it into a milk pitcher over a piece of ice, and frothing that. So it would be like okay. a fake nitro infused Americano. So I did that, except okay. instead of water, I used milk, and I put a little hazelnut in it, I put a little vanilla extract in it, and I sprinkled a little bit of brown sugar on top. Ooh. And that's my that's my beverage for the day. I learned that oh. my coffee maker can keep the coffee hot for more than four hours by just hitting the brew button again. <laughs> what do you mean more than four that's- hours? So the coffee maker we have, uh, by default, keeps the coffee hot up to four hours after you brew it. Okay. Sometimes I would like coffee in the afternoon, and the coffee maker shuts off. But I learned if you just press the brew button again, it'll heat up again. Oh, so you just like leaving coffee around for, for eight hours a day. I'm used to... At work, which I'm pretty sure just leaves coffee around for eight hours a day, <laughs> and that gets okay. me just fine. So there, there's something about the look, zen of 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 making the coffee right then and there, of grinding the I beans. I understand that grinding the beans, going to the mountaintop to picking out the beans individually, breaking each bean in a mortal and pester. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh huh. You know, I I don't have time for that. Oh, Remember, I'm a console gamer. I don't have time to mess around with settings and graphics <laughs> cards when it comes to my coffee. I am still trying to dial. This is a new coffee that I use today. I'm still trying to dial in the right grind size. Will it's every it's, day's it's a journey a, with espresso. Every day's a journey with cooking in general. <laughs> I I cooked today. I made a new type of. I've never made tan tan ramen before. I made. I cooked the pork Ooh. and everything, and it was. I had, a, I had a whole thing, and it was great. It was delicious. Today is not only Wolfden Podcast Tuesday, but it is also Taco Tuesday in my house. <laughs> and I hand make the guacamole and Ooh. salsa because I am that kind of guy. And today I put sugar in the salsa. Ooh. And I think that changed things. That's a that's a hack. That's something I gotta play around with a little bit. Yes. Another hack, when you make guacamole, put cumin in it. Come in. I call it coming. Coming, yeah. Uh, so you already have a mortal and pestle. So I mean, you're ready to make coffee. <laughs> I don't have a mortal and pestle. The way I mash how do you make guac guacamole? I, I put it in a big bowl and I use a a potato masher 
to smash it up. Oh, a potato masher? Yeah. Yes, another life hack. Every video shows them using a fork. No, use a potato masher because then if it's not ripe oh. yet, you can still mash it. Okay, I've seen these before. Do you use this one? It's like brass knuckles. No. No, I actually, I used the one that was like right below that and to the left. Below to the left. Oh, this is weird. It looks like a basket. Oxo, yeah, that's good I grips, use. potato masher. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to describe that for podcast listeners. It looks like a weird <laughs> basket with a handle, but it's used for mashing Just Google potatoes. OXO Good Grips Potato Masher. Uh, so That's the reason cool. I ordered Amazon Fresh today, and I did that because I uh, I left my toothbrush at Hannah's. So uh, I decided to spend $100 worth of groceries just to get a toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> you're at that stage of the relationship where you're leaving toothbrushes at their house. Oh, yeah. that Yeah, that that's it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, why don't we uh, thank some people? Actually, start the show. Let's st- actually start the show and stop talking about uh, our, our our weird quirks. Yeah. Uh, hey, we got uh, Kirk's night with the two months. Yo, Bob, happy two months. Primes coming your way every single time, buddy. Thanks, Kirk. I appreciate you taking the effort out of your the the time out of your day. <laughs> to come to twitch.tv slash wolf den make sure your amazon account is linked and drop in that prime subscription yeah uh, retro pentel pe- virtual pen tenel, thank you for gifting us up and anderson thank you for the three months hey wolf den thanks for the quality streams thanks for watching bro thank you for thinking this is quality <laughs> <laughs> No, it's Pete, like Peter. Retro Pete NL. Oh, okay, I'm very sorry. Oh. I can't read, and you should know that. Uh, let's talk about... So, there's nothing to talk about today. So, I trolled Reddit. <laughs> and I found this Reddit thread that was actually pretty good. So, uh, I figured this would be a good thing to talk about. Uh, this is by a... Uh, this is a Reddit user. So, this is, this is double freebooted right now. This is on r slash Nintendo Switch. Um, the, the, the title is State of Nintendo Franchises on Switch in March 2022. And this is by a user a user by the name of C... C-Choke? C-C-H-O-U-K. And then he says this was inspired by a user Andy Dockers 420. So it was... A free boot off of a free boot. And now we're free booting off of both of them. So here it is. There you um, go. The games that we currently have on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, Zelda, of course. Mario, of course. Yoshi, which I think that counts as Mario. Uh, Well, I mean, there's a lot of these that you can say count as part of a larger franchise you know what the problem is but the, like, the, the problem to me is that smash brothers calls yoshi its own character yes because there is a yoshi series of games yeah like like, like, like yoshi's so. epic yarn fine but yes. like yoshi in smash brothers is from mario <laughs> but he spun off and had his own games so no, technically I, I, he is the star of his own series i don't like it I don't like that. Did, did he? He started from oh Yoshi, Yoshi from Cookie Fame. <laughs> anyway, we also have Kirby, which I'll accept is its own franchise, uh, right. and that is coming. Very. I mean, there's there's games now, but there's like a, yeah. a big one coming in like a week. Uh, Pokemon. Does Pokemon count as a Nintendo franchise? It's primarily on Nintendo platforms. Uh, Nintendo does finance. The games, um, I would say it's a Nintendo franchise. We also have Splatoon, which we're getting a second game. Yes. We have Luigi's Mansion, which we did get a game for. Uh, we have Metroid, which we did already get a game for, and we will be getting that another game, one. That game just made this list. <laughs> we also have Smash Bros. We have Animal Crossing. We have Bayonetta, another questionable addition to this list. I, it it became a Nintendo franchise with the second one, mm-hmm. for sure. Because Nintendo now 
finances Platinum to make Bayonetta exclusively for the Switch. Okay. Then I'll allow it. Uh, Fire Emblem. Yes, we have games. Mm-hmm. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, we're getting one. No, we got we did get one already on Switch. Wasn't it a remake? Fuck this fucking franchise. <laughs> it's, no, because there there's there's Xenoblade Chronicles, then there's Xenoblade Chronicles X, which is a spin-off, and then there's two, which is on the Switch already, and then there's the remake of one, and then three is coming. I think I'm right. Xenoblade Chronicles X is what trips me up because that sounds like it's a remake, but it's not. It's a completely different game. Xenoblade Chronicles X came out in 2015. On the Wii U. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. And then there's Definitive Edition, which is also only on the Nintendo Switch. So Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was the one that we have. And we're also getting three in September of this year. Right. Remember, this is just games that have been released or are confirmed to being released on Mm. Switch. So we already have Xenoblade. It's already a thing. Yes. Uh, What else do we got here? We got WarioWare, which we did get a game. I was a little disappointed by WarioWare. I I played it for like three hours. (laughs) A lot of people are not happy with like the WarioWare games that have been coming out. Um, although I feel like I got to play it again because every time I see footage of that game, I'm seeing mini games in the game that I have never touched before. So yeah. like, I, I feel like I didn't get the full, uh, WarioWare experience. Mm-hmm. Detective Pikachu. We got a full game for that. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Apparently I looked this up. There's a sequel in the works coming to switch. It oh. was announced after the movie was released. And that's it. That's all we really know. Interesting. So we and we haven't seen anything about that. Correct. Because I, I bought the giant Detective Pikachu amiibo. Yeah, I think it's huge. The thing is huge and awesome. But uh, I guess that's yeah. a DS amiibo. Yes. Uh. Yeah, 3ds. That's it. Just says 3ds. Yeah. Birth of a New Duo. That was the original game. It had a weird name. That's in in Japan. Birth of a New Duo. And then Detective Pikachu Worldwide, March 2018. And then that's it. That same year, sequel is announced for the Nintendo Switch. Okay, so that's all we know. We don't, we're we not even sure. Released or right. confirmed. Well, okay, so so they're they're lumping it yeah. all together. Right. Uh, then we got Paper Mario, which was all right. the The last <laughs> one was just okay. I stopped playing. Yeah. After a few hours, it was it was okay. Mario Party, we got two already. One of them is just a yes. rehash. The, well, one of them people hated. <laughs> yeah, it was not <laughs> good. Uh, and then they did a rehash of old games, and 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 they fixed the online situation, so it's uh, mm-hmm. uh, easier to. It's easier to play with people. You can play full boards. They also kind of fixed the original uh, Mario Party that was released for the Switch. They uh, yeah. they they fixed the online a little bit. Uh, I still don't like Mario Party. I still still think the whole game's a sham. Yeah. Anyway, Mario Tennis, we got that pretty early on. Um, I really wanted to like it. Uh, I liked it for like a day or two, but uh, it didn't hold me for long enough to like finish the story mode or anything. Right. Uh, same thing with Mario Golf. I did like that a lot more, though. I had more fun with Mario Golf. Yeah. Uh, but, did I play Mario Golf? I don't remember if I did. It didn't hold me. I'm yeah. more excited for Nintendo Switch Sports Golf. Yeah. Which is a franchise that's missing from this list. <laughs> uh, No. No? We'll, if, we'll get to it when you scroll down a little okay. bit. Okay. Uh, Super Mario Maker, we did get one. And the you more get... I... I'm one of the last people still playing that game. <laughs> and I stand by... The, 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 the more I play it, the more disappointed I get with how Nintendo treated that game. I feel really? like it is it is 
Super Mario Maker 2 is in a lot of ways worse than the first game. Really? And and I don't know many games where that happens. Usually it's like this isn't that much better, so it's so I'm disappointed. But in this case it's like they actually went they rolled things back a lot. Like wow. there's no mystery mushroom, so you can't have uh, uh different outfits for for it, you know, you can't like make a Mega Man level and have you play as Mega right. Man. Right. Um uh, the online that they added is basically unplayable. Um, mm-hmm. They've, they've, uh, instead of having the 100 Mario challenge where you have 100 lives to beat 16 levels, they made it endless. So it feels like there's just no goal to accomplish, you know? There's right. like nothing to strive for. Um, although this, uh, the addition of Super Worlds is fantastic that, that you can like, make basically your own Mario game instead of Mario Maker is great. However, that was released like two years after the game came out. So it didn't launch with that. Yeah. So I'm, I, I I like Mario Maker, but I feel like there's a lot of room for improvement if they want to make a third one. Right. Anyway, Mario and Sonic, the Olympic Games. Does this count as a, Mario, as a Nintendo franchise? Doesn't Sega make it? Sega makes it, and I think they're just getting permission to use the Mario characters in the Switch version of the game because they've released this game for iOS with with, with just Sonic. It's called Sonic at the Olympic Games. Ooh, okay. So then, no, so, I would say no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's one of those things though that if this guy didn't include that on the list. People would complain. People would say you forgot. Well, this guy did include a lot of franchises, not a lot, but like he included, he didn't include several several notable ones. All right, we'll 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 get to that. Brain Age, we did get, uh, but not in America. Yeah, right. No, we still never that... got it in North America. No. Uh, boxy box boy. Yes, isn't that a remake? No, is it? No, it's a sequel. What was box boy? It was, Bo- it was box boy and girl. Box boy plus box girl. Yes. It was released on the Switch in April 2019. Ah, okay. It's not a remake? No. It's the fourth game of the Box Boy series and first to be released on the Nintendo Switch. Okay. It's a follow-up to Bye Bye Box Boy. I thought it was literally Box Boy and then they added like content to it. Yeah, no. It's the first game to feature multiplayer. Oh, cool. Hyrule Warriors. That's a weird... That's just Zelda. Well, again, it's Nintendo's habit of like they have this one mega franchise and everything has sub series. You know, yeah, there's Mario, but then there's sub series like Paper Mario and Mario Party and Mario Tennis. There's Pokemon, but then there's sub series like Detective Pikachu. I, 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 I would, can't... I, I would have argued that uh, the, the the Warriors series is its own thing, and they bar just like Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. They just borrowed the characters and made a game out of it. Right, because yeah, technically Hyrule Warriors is Dynasty Warriors with you know Zelda in it. Right, exactly. And they also have Fire Emblem Warriors on here too. So right. I, I wouldn't have included that. Uh, why are these circled? Clubhouse Games, Big Brain Academy, Cruisin, Strikers, yeah. and Pokemon Snap. Why are those? Why it's, are those circled? At the it's bottom? circled because if you look in the next section, remakes. Remakes, they have Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, mm-hmm. Advance Wars, and Famicom Detective Club. The Famicom Detective Club and Advance Wars are also circled because they're circled because it's noted starting in 2020, Nintendo revived seven franchises that were inactive since at least 2019. Oh, that's cool. All these games that are circled were inactive until at least 2017. Uh 2020 rather. Uh okay. So so these were revived franchises that have been dormant for a really long time. Yes. When yes. was the last Clubhouse games? Uh that's a good question. I to be honest, I thought Clubhouse Games was a new game. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Oh, DS. Oh, the DS. I forgot. Yeah, the DS. The 2000, 2005 was the yeah. original Clubhouse game. 2005 in Japan, 2006 in North America. Yes. Uh, okay. Big Brain Academy. Cruising? I thought that was like Cruising USA. So, 
Yeah, it is Cruisin' USA. Cruisin' is a was a franchise developed by Midway and Nintendo. It was a partnership between the oh, two. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Uh, that's why Cruisin' USA and Cruisin' Worlds only appeared on N64. And I, I think the arcade cabinet even had the N64 logo on the attract screen. That's crazy. Um, so, yeah, I think when Midway folded, Nintendo got the rights to Cruisin'. So mm-hmm. they can they've been releasing cruising games for a while now. I don't want to say like as a budget series, but like as definitely like a B tier series. And apparently the games have not been bad. You know, I'm giving a lot of crap for them splitting like Hyrule Warriors and Mario and Sonic off of different uh into different franchises and Yoshi being its own franchise, but for whatever reason, yeah. I'm po- totally fine with them splitting off Pokemon, Detective Pikachu, Pokemon <laughs> Snap and Mystery Dungeon all being separate franchises for whatever reason i'm 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 down for that because they're very very different um pokemon mystery dungeon there was a demo available i don't know if it's still available that game sucks and 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 it it, it maybe if maybe you guys might not have played it since you were kids but man that game is rough and this remake (laughs) isn't a it's it's just kind of like putting a fresh coat of paint on something that was already made. So, I mean, I mean, it's it it it's like a Game Boy Advance game, uh, that just has aged incredibly poorly. Yeah, I don't know anybody who actually likes the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series. P- people say that they do, but I think it's just that they played it back when when that was like when it was like yeah, had, you know there weren't a lot of games out. <laughs> You had one game to take with you on road trips, and that yeah. was the one you took. Yeah, and your and your parents were like, "Oh, you like Pokemon? I'll get you the new Pokemon game." And then you got that yeah. garbage, and you were like, "Oh, well, I guess yep. I have to like this because it's the only game I have." <laughs> um. Anyway, that's all of the uh, released or confirmed games, and then there's also that remix section, which we already said: Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Advance Wars, and Famicom Detective Club. Yes. Uh, now, oh, Wii U re-releases. Yes. Uh, oh. You got Mario Kart, New Super Mario Brothers, Pikmin, and Donkey Kong Country. These are just the straight ports from Wii U to Switch. However, they're straight ports, but they are A, keeping the franchises alive, and B, are monumentally more successful on the Switch than they are yes. on the Wii U. We're getting Mario Kart DLC, and yeah. a lot of it. So I would say that these are not just re-releases. These are re-releases that are being properly supported. Th- these are necessary re-releases. It, it's like they didn't. Yeah. Re- Nintendo did not have an audience on the Wii U that that that, that it has now. That they didn't have the access to that sort of audience when they released these great games. Um, Mario Kart uh, has a lot more content now. Uh, yeah. I, I would I would argue uh, Mario Kart. Eight deluxe plus DLC would go into like the 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 a higher category, maybe even remake or yeah. or, or well remake, yeah, because all the courses are are already part and of other games. They completely redid battle mode for deluxe. Oh, I didn't know that. So yeah, yeah, on the Wii U, battle mode was on tracks like the regular tracks. They weren't in arenas, and then okay. for deluxe, they put them back in arenas like they sh- they were supposed to be. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's it for the Wii U re-releases. I feel like they, that's it. There's only four. I feel like there's been so many. Well, well there's Wonderful 101, them... but yeah, does that even that's count? Not a... No, because that's also on PlayStation now. Oh, okay. Yeah. And remember, a lot of um, Wii U re-releases were are just sequels. Uh, Tech you know, Nanner like says Mar- Mario 3D Land, but I guess that counts as Super Mario. Yeah. Yeah, I guess New Super Mario Brothers is a different type of game than just regular yeah, Super Mario. New Super Mario Brothers, like, that's specifically, like, the side-scrolling Mario. Right. Even though I, I think, you know, if we're going to make your argument about sub-series, I think New Super Mario Brothers and regular Super Mario are the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, kind of. Uh, yeah. They're, they're branched off, but like, if we're talking about France, we're talking about franchises. Yeah. You know? Uh, 
Because in that case, then you got Metroid Prime is different than Metroid. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> anyway, uh, spiritual successors. We fit to Ring Fit Adventure. I'll allow it. Yes. I'll allow it. Although the Wii mm-hmm. Fit had like some. So I don't know. Because like the way I remember the Wii Fit, the Wii Fit is like one of the things that brought the Wii into the mainstream. Like that's something that our yeah. mom would be like, oh, tell me about this Wii thing. Yeah. Like Ring Fit Adventure is more of an actual video game than Ring that No, Ring Fit is more of an actual video game than Wii Fit was. Wii Fit attempted to be an actual exercise software. Yeah, like a wellness thing. Yeah, with like the balance board and everything. I, I so so that's how I feel too, but Ring Fit Adventure is always top of the sales charts, especially in Japan. So I feel yeah. like I'm just not privy to that world like i feel like it's being used in a similar way to the we fit was maybe yeah. not to that extent but uh i feel like it's it's i'm not seeing it I'm, like I, like the numbers are there but i'm not visually seeing people be like let me hear about that ring fit i want to use it in my old folks home well i think just the fact that it has the word fit in it true is the link between we fit and ring fit right you know, because they're both games that are trying to get you fit. And, you know, they, they can't call it Wii Fit because it's not on the Wii. And they invented this fucking ring for it. So it's <laughs> Ring Fit. And it has an actual adventure mode. So Ring mm-hmm. Fit Adventure. If this was on the Wii, they'd probably call it Wii Fit Adventure. Right. Uh, then we also have Wii Sports, which is getting a spiritual successor. Nintendo Switch Sports. I am super stoked for that game. I played a little bit of it during the demo. It was a lot of fun. I'm not allowed to talk about my experiences or else (laughs) Nintendo will snipe me in the back of the head, but I will say it was a great time. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I'm excited for that game. Although I didn't get to play, I only got to play uh, Chambara, uh, Bowling, and Tennis. Uh, But there's other games that are going to be for it. Yeah, and there's going to be games added to the game later on yeah i mean it's not perfect also i wish it was just free like there's no, like just put it in nintendo switch online or, or or make it come with every nintendo switch from now on like yeah. that's that's part of what made wii sports so great was that it was a pack-in game if, if they sold that separately i don't know how well it would have done yeah because uh, it only had four games in it but uh mm-hmm. uh yeah i don't know i think the new nintendo switch sports looks awesome uh then we have games that have been inactive what does this mean 2015 to 2019 Uh, what does that mean so basically these are games that have not had a new release between that have not had a new release since the years 2015 and 2019 uh okay since oh they haven't had a new release since the okay within with that four year time frame was the last time these games have had a release Okay, Mario versus Donkey Kong, uh, Mario and Luigi, uh, mm. Doctor Mario, Art Academy. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Star Fox, Chibi Robo, and Pokemon Rumble. The hell's yeah. Pokemon Rumble? Apparently, it's a Pokemon beat 'em up. The hell? Okay. <laughs> I mean, can't we just say that that has turned into uh, what? Have- Oh wait, a Pokemon beat 'em up. Oh, it's not like a, yeah. it's not like a fighting game. It's like a beat 'em up. Correct. Interesting. Okay. What the hell was this for? Oh, 3ds. Uh, 3ds. I think it was a. There was a Wii U version. Yeah, there's a Pokemon Rumble, Pokemon Rumble Blast for the 3ds, Pokemon Rumble U. For the Wii U and Pokemon Rumble World, also on the 3DS. This kind of looks a lot like Mystery Dungeon. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Weird. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, Chibi Robo, that was like a meme when like the Switch was out. Every, every freaking Nintendo Direct, everybody was like, this is the, this is the Direct. Chibi <laughs> Robo, we're going to get Robo. a game. Yeah, Chibi Robo is like one of those small Nintendo franchises that you know you think nobody cares about but it's got like a hardcore right. cult following they made an amiibo 
for the for yeah the guy. that that's why everybody thought they were going to make more chibi robo stuff and i think yeah. there's room for more chibi robo stuff yeah definitely uh people really love the mario and luigi series because it's kind of the spiritual successor to super mario rpg but so is paper mario and i think uh, we haven't true. gotten a new mario and luigi yet because paper mario was the home console mario rpg and Mario and Luigi was the handheld Mario RPG. And what do you do when your main system is a hybrid console? Right. <laughs> you know, I, I, I guess they've thought, <laughs> well, Paper Mario is the home console. This is primarily a home console. So we'll just do Paper Mario. And, and it was the more popular uh, franchise, I guess. Yes, but I mean, I always thought thought of them as like equally popular because they both serve the same market. Mm -hmm. You know, people who like Mario RPGs that were a little more humorous and story focused and did something different other than the usual platforming stuff. Okay. Um, I think there's room for that. I think there's room for another one of those, uh, even if there are two Mario RPGs on the same platform. Sell it for yeah. forty bucks. Make it a smaller yeah, I mean, game. We have like Make the graphics how many a Mario platformers? We have yeah. how many Mario platformers on the Switch? Uh, not everything needs to be a grand epic. You know, you can yes. like make a triple A game that has like sixteen bit graphics. You know, yes. <laughs> uh, Art Academy would be amazing. Yeah, it's had freaking Switch as a touch screen. Colors Live works awesome. So yeah. like. I mean, there's there's room for that. I mean, I understand why that franchise would be dead because there's no friggin' there hasn't been a stylus in a while. But yeah. like, uh, you can make one. Yeah. Yeah, friggin'. Uh, you released one for Brain Age in Europe that and Mario Maker. Mario and Maker, Mario Maker. Yeah. So yeah, there's room for that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, inactive since 2010 to 2014. Golden Sun that has some hype around it. If they released yes. a Golden Sun. Kevin Kenson would lose his mind. <laughs> uh, pilot Wings. I actually loved the Pilot Wings on the 3DS because I bought the 3DS at launch and it was the only game that I wanted to play. <laughs> it was like there was like barely any launch titles. Yeah. Uh, and that was, I thought it was great. It didn't review very well, but I had a really good time with it. I 100%ed it. I, I, I might have 99%ed it. There might have been oh, one wow. mission that I didn't finish. <laughs> I should break out my my 3ds for that. There you go. Uh, Poke Park. Poke Park. I'm learning so much about Pokemon now. I that sounds like a Japanese only thing. Wii. Oh, it's for the Wii. I remember this game. Oh. Uh, and Not then NES Remix. That game was sick. That game was. Wouldn't good. mind another one of those. Yeah. Uh, Sin and Punishment. There was only one game. There was two. Oh, right. There was the 64 one, and then there was Star Successor on the Wii. Right. And I'm surprised Nintendo hasn't kept that going in some form. Then there's Kid Icarus, and the last one was on the 3DS, right? Yeah. There's only been three Kid Icarus games, one on the NES, one on the original Game Boy, and then 20 years later on the 3DS, and then nothing. So, the, the fan favorite, the one on the 3DS, I, yeah. I I did not like that game. I didn't think it was that good. Yeah, it was very weird. Like, Kid Icarus is a platformer, and the 3DS game is like a base shooter beat-em-up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very like, weird. I, it was very weird. I couldn't really get into it. Yeah. Um, and then there's Pokemon Link. So I had to look this up, and that's the European name. The right. international release is Pokemon Trozy. Oh, I thought, well, so in, in Europe, it's Pokemon Link Battle? Or is that a different game? That might be a different game. Well, anyway, it's a, it's it, a, it's a, what do you call it? Uh, uh, it's a match three, isn't it? Yeah, match four. Yeah. Uh, or three, I don't know. They're matching four. Okay. What a Poyo Poyo. Yeah. It's basically Poyo Poyo of a Pokemon. There you go. Uh okay. I think we I think the world could do without that. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I don't think the world desperately needs a, a, another Pokemon matching game. Yeah. Then we have at the bottom, inactive since at least 2009. We have F Zero, yeah. which just came to the Switch finally, but it was a it was a, yeah. They just re released the N64 the, version. Yeah, we, we got haven't N64. gotten a new F Zero. Yeah, Wave Race, uh, Excite Bike, mm -hmm. uh, Punch Out. Uh, Punch Out would be great on the Switch. Yeah. yeah, you had a lot of fun with the Punch Out on Punch the Out Wii. on the Wii was great. That was such a good game. Mario Superstar Baseball, I wouldn't be surprised if we get something like that, uh, like even yeah. next year. Um, 1080 Snowboarding, is that on the Switch yet? The the uh, No. The N64 I version? I don't think it is. That desperately needs to come to the Switch. Absolutely. Uh, Pokemon Pinball, okay. I'll allow that. And Pokemon Stadium, that's one people will lose their minds for. Yeah, Pokemon Stadium is another one where like that was the home console Pokemon because regular right. Pokemon was on handheld. And the gimmick with Stadium was you could upload your handheld Pokemon into the home console version. So right. what do you do when your home console and your handheld are the same? Yeah. But but there's I feel like there's simple answers to that. Like, yeah. like the worry for Nintendo is that like Nintendo likes to polish their stuff. They, 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 I, I'm talking about Nintendo, but we're also talking about Pokemon games. I'm talking right. about polish. I'm talking about Nintendo. Pokemon, maybe not so much in the polish department, <laughs> but um, I think that they don't have to worry about having every single game come out for the Switch being a like big grandiose triple a experience like right pokemon stadium is just the battle aspect of pokemon just do that it, and fucking put it on a switch like like it, it doesn't it it doesn't need to have all of these features and stuff yeah um yeah so i i, I feel like uh, that's kind of the opposite problem for pokemon usually it's like we had the home console and, and and the and the portable version. In this case, Pokemon Stadium was the home console version. Yeah, so, and, and that's the one that they decided to throw out. Well, and also too, Pokemon Stadium was just battles. Right. I mean, granted, it was in 3D, it was on the big screen, but it was just battles. But now you can do that in the regular Pokemon games, and so much more. I so remember why... the animations of Pokemon Stadium being better than the animations we currently have in Pokemon games. I mean, it's been however long since I played Pokemon Stadium, so I can't really say. But like when they I do a move, you. you like see it. And even yeah, you in like see the move. Even the animations in like Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, like they were like yeah. very disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> so I I mean if they were to do a uh, a Pokemon Stadium on the Switch they could focus on that. It's the battles. Make the battles really yeah. cool looking and then, then yeah. that's it. But they would also need a way for you to transfer Pokemon from like your other games into uh, into this. Well, the easiest thing to do would be, you know, if it recognizes a save from any of the previous Pokemon games. But I don't know. Maybe because Nintendo's got some weird thing about uploading Pokemon saves to the cloud. It's just not possible. See, that would be the perfect way to uh, back up Pokemon saves. Like, instead yeah. of going to the cloud, how about you just have us upload our saves to Pokemon Link, and then you can control... Not Link. What's yeah. it called? The database, whatever po it's called. Library? No, it's Pokemon something. Uh, chat. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's how... It, if you want Pokemon Home, thank you, um, Mega Dragon. Yeah. If if you wanted to uh, uh, transfer Pokemon from the main Pokemon games into a stadium on the Switch, they would make you do it through home. Yeah. Uh, which would probably be more confusing than it has to be. But uh, there's potential for that. I don't see why they wouldn't do something like that. Oh, yeah, I know why. Absolutely. It's because they hate spending money on their games. They only like to make uh, <laughs> movies and, and plushes and, and stuff. Yeah. So... They only have eight games here for inactive. Uh, I feel like you probably found some more. Uh, yes. I think the big one 
is Earthbound. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> kind three. of a big deal. There's been three. Two of them, only two of them were ever released internationally. Um, so there's that. Another one is, you know, a lot of their dancing games like Rhythm Heaven or Elite Beat Agents. Right. Uh, those were popular. Those are not here. Uh, another one, Star Tropics. There were two Star Tropics games on the NES, and the first one gets re released all the time in like different collections and stuff. That's a series they have not gone back to in years. I feel like there's um, a remake for this. For Star Tropics? Yeah, it wasn't there. Well, I don't know. Star Tropics, you've probably heard about it. It's the game where you have to solve a riddle, and the answer to the riddle was actually dipping the re in real life instruction manual into water to reveal yes. <laughs> a secret code. And on the Wii Virtual Console release, they actually added a mini game to that of, of you dipping, like taking the Wii remote, picking up a piece of paper and dunking it in water to figure out the code. I think there is a fan initiative to remake Star Tropics. And I think Devolver Digital is also... <laughs> there's, a, there's an article from Nintendo Enthusiasts. Devolver asks Daddy Nintendo to please let it make Star Tropics. There you go. <laughs> they tweeted, volunteering to help make a new Star Tropics happen. Please, Daddy Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that there's potential for them to one day just be like, fuck it, Earthbound 4. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, because Earthbound is specifically tied to its creator, and its creator uh... has said, like, I don't think i like i don't think i want to make any more earthbound games <laughs> what has he been doing uh let me f find his name i don't think he's a video game developer by trade i think he uh Shigat shigatasu ito uh japanese copywriter sas lyricist game designer and actor oh weird okay yes uh i mean Put some money in his lap. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird. Yeah. I wonder if he's the reason they haven't ported Mother 3. I doubt he's the reason they haven't ported Mother 3. He's mm -hmm. definitely the reason why they haven't made another Mother game. I think they just haven't ported Mother 3 because they just don't know what to do with this series outside right. of Smash Brothers. We didn't talk about Star Fox, but that's a very sad case. That is a very sad case. <laughs> because that is a franchise with a ton of potential that just went down the tubes the, after the after Nintendo 64. Just, yeah, they're like Nintendo. Like, they try, but every time they try, it just gets weirder and unnecessary. They, they, I like don't, everything they add is unnecessary. I don't know... I don't know what it is with Nintendo. Every time they make a new game for one of their beloved franchises, they always have to add a weird little gimmick thing. Yeah. And the problem is sometimes it works, <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of times it doesn't work. So like they got to learn that like some games don't need the weird little gimmick. They just need a, a fresh, they just, they just need a refresh. They just need the game to be yeah. refreshed for new audiences. Yeah. Um, and, like, and I get it. You want it to be a little different than what came before. You want to keep things new and interesting. But sometimes you go too far with this yeah. shit. Yeah, it's it's so. it's sad. I kind of want to open up my pilot wings to save <laughs> and see where <laughs> I was at with that. that. Is. Um, anyway, uh, I can't think of any other franchises that uh, uh, they haven't talked about. Rybred in the chat said, I was busy watching Shrek. Did y'all mention Custom Robo? Uh, no, I forgot about that game. That uh, was a series that spanned five games uh, with titles Whoa. released on the N64, GBA, GameCube, and DS. Only two uh, were released outside of Japan. And the last game in the series came out in 2007. I did not. I did. I completely forgot about this. 
I don't think I, I remember it was a Nintendo franchise. I remember Custom Robo on the GameCube. I didn't know there was anything beyond that. Interesting. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's another, another series that Nintendo could. I mean, Big Mechs. Who doesn't love Big Mechs? Uh, f- I'm reading chat, seeing if we forgot anything. Yeah. Tech Niner says uh, Battle Toads. I'm about to time him out in the chat. <laughs> I worked at GameStop. Uh, that's trauma. You're bringing up old trauma. Underscore says really all that's left are a lot of NES only titles like Balloon Fight and Duck Hunt. Uh, yeah, those are games that only had like one release. They're well known and popular Nintendo games for sure. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if you would call them like franchises because there's only one of them. I think there was rumors that Nintendo's working on a light gun type situation for the Switch. That would be a perfect opportunity to do something like Duck Hunt. Duck Instead Hunt, of Link's Hogan crossbow Valley. training, it should have been Duck Hunt. Mm. Yeah. I mean, Link's crossbow training would be pretty cool too. Make a game yeah. that's packed in with the light gun and have it be. Uh, Link's crossbow training slash duck hunt. That'd be cool. Yes. Yes. Game and watch, Mega Dragon says. Uh, I mean, we got new stuff, but it's not on the Switch. We got new game and watches. Yeah. <laughs> we got new game and watches. They're just not traditional game and watches. I could see there being a. a I could see there being room for. Game and like a new game and watch game for the Switch that's just a collection of mini games. Yeah, um, yeah, but I mean, well, they we've kind of moved past that. They did that on the that. Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance. There was the Game and Watch Gallery. Yeah, and they were all Game and Watch games, and they had you could switch between the original graphics and remake graphics. Not a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, Mecha Dragon says, "Oh wait, Nintendo Dogs." Oh yeah, that's that's one of yeah. the biggest ones that that, that was, was omitted a huge here. One, yeah, and that was last on the 3DS, I believe. Yes. Uh, Retro Pentel says Wario Land, and that is a good point. This list brings up WarioWare, mm-hmm. but not the Wario Land platformers. And there were a lot of those. Wario there Land. Were four, there were at least four on handheld, and there was one on the Wii, and there was Wario World, which was on the GameCube. That... Yeah, Wario, uh, there's potential for, for something in that franchise, yeah. for sure. Uh, I, I guess Wario's graduated to the Wear games. Yeah. Um, but Nintendogs is a big is a big deal. Like, yes. it's, did that always... Did you have to have your 3DS on and asleep in order to, to play that game? No, right? Uh, I don't think so. Because I'm trying to think. Of, well, I guess it had a time. It had the time. Yeah. It, so that would be fine. I'm trying to think like, uh, what it would there be a limiting factor as to why it wouldn't be on the Switch? I don't. I don't see why there would be. I mean, I guess because the whole point of it being on the DS was you take it with you like you would your dog, but you can do that with the Switch. Exactly. I think that'd be a great thing. Yeah. Um. Okay, I, we we covered a lot. I don't think there's much yes. uh, more we can. People are getting really into the into the uh, into the fringe territory. Uh, yeah, bravely default. That's is that Nintendo? That's Square. Yeah. Uh, can we talk about rhythm rhythm, rhythm heaven? Will Will did bring that up. Yes, and and elite beat agents. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot that, but again, you know, Nintendo's been kind of reviving a lot lately, so I, I don't want to fault have, them too much. So it's surprising, um, but also too, Nintendo is has shown this before. If a franchise, even if it's like a crown jewel, if the franchise does poorly for whatever reason, they will just pretend that series doesn't exist for a good <laughs> solid decade. Yeah, and then it'll I mean, it's get been... a, a cult following, and then people will be mad that they haven't said anything about it yet. I mean, it's been more than a decade since the last F-Zero on the GameCube. Uh, There was a long gap between Metroid uh, Other M and Metroid Dread. Mm -hmm. Um, Trying to think what else. Um, I'm guessing, I mean, Punch-Out was popular, but I guess it didn't do the right numbers. Uh, Wave Race, uh, Blue Storm, and 1080 (laughs) Avalanche were on the GameCube, and people didn't buy GameCube games a lot back then. Yeah. 
Uh, Star Fox. Star Fox Zero was a disaster. So we're Star Fox Zero is Star only a disaster because they have the weird gimmick with the with the yeah. with the pad. They shot themselves in the foot with that. <laughs> they shot themselves in the foot. Um. I think a lot of the games on this list are making me realize that there is still room in the market for a cheap, low-powered, tiny handheld. <laughs> you could put Mario yeah. and Luigi on there. You could put Golden Sun on there. You could put all the little the little portable only titles. You can just fart it over to the to the small little portable guy. Yeah, no, def. I think, and especially have that link to your Nintendo account. And we've seen with like the enthusiast market, like the analog pocket, uh, the Evercade portable, um, like a lot of the plug and play systems. Like we've seen, there is definitely a market for like retro style video gaming. So if Nintendo were to do like a, a companion system to the Switch that played, you know, 16 bit games, I think that would be a. Uh, a, a safe haven, if you will, for franchises like uh, Wave Race and 1080 and F Zero and Excite Bike, and you don't even need that it, device to switch. You because you could just have your account. Yes, have the game on both. I don't know if Nintendo would allow that, but no, <laughs> that would be pretty cool. All right. Hey, we got more notifications. Uh, oh boy, it's been a while. Miss Texone, thank you for the 32 months. Pole line, thank you for the 38. Hey, Bob, nice sippy cup, you silly Billy. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Underscore, thank you for the 51 months. Route 23 Games, thank you for the subscription. TNY, thank you for the subscription. Briar Rye, thank you for the two months. I didn't know. Big Max. I don't know Big Max. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Like you don't know Big Max, M E C H. Like your custom robos or your Gundams. They or wrote M E X. Yeah, I think I I think he doesn't know how to spell. <laughs> <laughs> Max, like like robots. That's okay. I don't know how to spell either. Hey, last week there uh, PlayStation did their own direct. Yes, and the and it state wasn't of play. it wasn't that bad. It, no, it, it mostly focused on uh, games coming from the Japanese developers like Capcom and Square. Uh, so, so, so I actually liked it until about like three quarters of the way in, and then I was like, uh, <laughs> I was, it was like, I was like, oh, it's getting better and better, and then they kind of fizzled out at the end. To yeah. me, anyway. Then, they, they had two big games at the end. They were like, we got two more for you. And I thought yeah. they were the same game because they looked exactly the same. And they were both JRPGs. And then they just ended the show. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. There was a couple of cool things that I was interested in, though. Yeah. Yeah, same. Uh, let's go through the list. Uh, it started with Capcom reveals Exo Primal coming to PS4 and PS5 in 2023. A brand new IP from Capcom that has some serious Dino Crisis vibes in the trailer. Uh, Dino Crisis is, of, of course, a survival horror series uh, where instead of facing zombies, it's dinosaurs. And this game is definitely gives off similar vibes to Capcom's dormant IP. The game also seems to feature online multiplayer, so you'll be able to take down hundreds of dinos alongside your friends. Don't have exact release date yet, but it is coming to PS4 and PS5 sometime next year, along with other consoles. So for whatever reason, this interested me. Like, like, like it's kind of just—I don't know. But for whatever reason, I, I was—I was kind of interested in it. I've seen it. I've seen it compared to uh, Earth Defense Force, but okay. with dinosaurs instead of big bugs, uh, and uh, Overwatch with the online multiplayer aspect. Um, and it definitely looks like that. The Dino Crisis vibe that they keep saying in this article is like if you've seen the trailer, it's accurate because it's a Capcom game. There's dinosaurs, and one of the characters looks like Regina from Dino Crisis. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes you wonder why didn't they just make a new Dino Crisis? Yeah, they should just call this Dino Crisis. Um, or even like you know, I think the Resident Evil two and three remakes both prove there's an audience for 
remaking PS1 survival horror games in in a new style. If they remade Dino Crisis like that, it would it would be a monumental success. Have Dino Crisis be the third person survival horror series and have Resident Evil keep with the first person survival horror. Right. Uh I don't know. I, I, am I a I'm kind of into this because uh, it doesn't just feel like like AAA studios have just been making the same game for the past like 15 years, just over and over. Oh, again. yeah. And yeah, this yeah. feels like at least there's some sort of spin. They're taking some sort of yeah. risk here, uh, even though it's just a horde shooter. But yeah. Like it's it's just I don't know the the way that 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 you're in like a like a cool mech suit. It's like Anthem, yeah. but like. You're shooting hordes of dinosaurs. Like I think that looks pretty yeah. cool, and I uh, think it's cool that Capcom is trying something new because the yes. past few years they've been sticking with Resident Evil and Monster Hunter, with like a dip into like Street Fighter or Mega Man every now and then. Yeah, and those are all but, franchises they've had. Like, like this yes. is this is something different, and the gameplay is different. So I'm I'm yeah I'm at least interested in this. I want to at least commend them for trying something else. Um. Uh, but that said, Dino Crisis remake, get on it. That would be nice. Uh, would the be next nice. one on this list is Ghostwire Tokyo. I'm also interested yes. in Ghostwire Tokyo, but we already knew this game was happening. Yeah, it just showed off um, more of like the open world aspect of the game. Uh, PS5 exclusive coming next week. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, real. That's soon. the same time as Kirby. So, sorry, yes. Ghostwire. <laughs> Also, I still haven't played Sifu. Oh. So, Apparently that's on the PS4, so I can get it. <laughs> okay. So, not announced here, but at the exact same time that this trailer dropped, uh, what's her name? Oh, yes. Her, hey. the, everybody's favorite person who worked on this game who's not working on this game anymore. It's not Naganuma. No, it's not Naganuma. Uh, no. It's Nakamura, I think. Nakamura. Nakamura. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Hikaru's last name is also Nakamura. <laughs> Ikumi. Ikumi Nakamura. Ikumi Nakamura. So she yeah. was the the she worked on Okami. Mm -hmm. Uh and she got a lot of fame from when she did this. On the Game Awards, yeah. uh, she's doing a little dance. Yeah. Uh, she was very cute. Everybody was like, oh, my God, I love this person. And then she almost immediately quit uh, uh, <laughs> working on Ghostwire. She's like, she, like, yeah. announced Ghostwire because she was the creative director. Or not creative director. Art director. Uh, yeah. Um, and then no, she... creative director. She was creative director. Okay. Yes. Uh, and then she left... Uh, and she announced her own studio at the exact same time that the Ghostwire Tokyo trailer was happening live on the, yeah. the, the state of play. Uh, and the video that she has for her new studio is awesome. But it's just her walking <laughs> around Tokyo. But it's directed very well. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I would check that out. Just Google Ikumi Nakamura. Um, yeah. The new studio is called something. Unmask? Oh, uh, Unseen. Unseen. Yeah. Unseen Studio. I have no idea what they're doing. But it's kind of, that felt like a big fuck you to, to Ghostwire Tokyo to do it at the exact same time. Yeah. It was like she quits Tango Gameworks almost immediately after revealing the game. And mm -hmm. then she announces her new studio the second the trailer comes, the new trailer comes out. She also did a little tour, kind of like what Kojima yes. did. Yes. Like Kojima quit Konami and then he did a little tour of other studios. Uh, Ikumi did the same thing. Did um, you see Kojima was tweeting about how he saw the Batman and all he was tweeting about was Robert Pattinson's body? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did he have to say about Robert Pattinson's body? Try to look it up. I saw the Batman and it was very good. It was very good. I'm kind of hoping I could find a pirated copy of it because I want to see it again, but I don't want to go to a theater. Oh Once my god! Enough. You know what? I gotta be honest. Three hours is out. It's too much. Yeah, especially I not. 
I, I don't right. agree with people who are saying that it kind of ends a bunch of times. I don't think so. I think it was. I think the story was paced fine, but uh, it was too much. It was too much story. Packed I, when 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 they say it ended a bunch of times, at least to me, like the, the whole the whole crux of the. I don't think this is giving anything away. The whole crux of the movie is trying to stop the Riddler, mm -hmm. and then Batman stops the Riddler, and then all of a sudden the Riddler goes, "One more thing." And then there's a, a, a whole other thing that he's got to do. See, that see, takes but like I, an extra twenty minutes. I think I heard you say that, and I don't agree. I I think that it's still part of stopping the Riddler. But it just felt like it. It kind of felt like it came out of nowhere. It was like a gotcha and moment. It was a gotcha moment, but like it, it sort of became, took this slow burn thriller and turned it into, for lack of a better word, a big high action superhero film. Now. It's a good section. I liked it. I understood what the point was. But if that's what they wanted to do, maybe try to find a way to work in that into a shorter movie. I I do agree that uh, the ending, the very end, right, the part we're talking about is what made yeah. it a superhero movie. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like that was like all of the tropes of superhero movies were packed into the like last like 30 minutes of, of, of the movie. Um, yeah. But I enjoyed I enjoyed all of it. I just had to pee really yes, bad no. by the end of it. Uh, all this criticism aside, if you haven't seen it yet, finish watching the podcast and then go to your local movie theater to watch it. Uh, I think I did find the uh, the thing, the the Kojima thing. Uh, okay. Usually they sh <laughs> wait on. There's a quote tweet first. Robert Patton, Robert's yeah. own presence and acting ability are excellent, but the director has a good way of showing it. The scene in which he pushes a heavy object indoors with his upper body naked. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here he gives the impression of flexible back muscles like a ballet dancer, not hard muscles from muscle training and protein soaking. Also, the breakfast scene with Al Alfredo. It's a bad translation. Yeah. <laughs> he looks dazzled and makes him wear sunglasses even though he is indoors. And then the quote tweet says, usually they show his muscles during training scenes or the naked or the naked during shower scenes or when healing wounds in the washroom, like stitching scenes. Normally, they would show him wearing sunglasses while driving a convertible car during the daytime. But in Gotham City this time, it is dark even during the daytime, so it's not necessary. Or is it uh, an homage to Twilight, in which he is dazzling because he is a vampire? Uh, I, how, I would how, say... How does that boy's brain work? I, I, I love Kojima, but he is... He is on something on this one. This he, one ain't... He definitely watched a different movie. <laughs> yes. Something's up there. Kojima yeah. Productions retweeted something the other day. I they it was very inappropriate. <laughs> I'm trying to find it, <laughs> but I was like, "Whoa, what?" <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah, I'll have to look later. But yeah, I was okay. like, I was like, "What the? F why is <laughs> like threw me for a loop?" Maybe they yeah. unretweeted it. Uh, anyway, back to the state of play. Oh, uh, yes. New demo available for Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. Stranger of Paradise is the Final Fantasy series take on the Dark Souls formula coming from Niho developer Team Ninja. The game is coming out today, actually, uh, March 15th, and there's a demo available on the PlayStation Store, so you can try it before you buy it. I didn't know people were excited for this. I didn't know it was a Souls game. It's I just a thought it was another thing. random ass Final Fantasy game. This is that Final Fantasy game where he wears AirPods and plays metal music and stuff. Yeah. And they're just like normal dudes who are fighting like the god of chaos or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, uh, seems real weird. Yes. Well, all Final Fantasy games are real weird. The last here's Final one, Fantasy here's one game. thing that, that, uh, that Kojima Productions retweeted and it's uh, Norman Reedus being carried mm -hmm. by I think that's uh, Guillermo del Toro's character. And he's got a very defined yes. butt. <laughs> and that's it. Yes. That's all I got. Uh, he does like butts. Yeah. There's no denying I mean, that. He doesn't. 
Somebody, somebody in the chat uh, said, I hope, I hope Kojima isn't a homophobe. And no, he's definitely not. No. It's probably the opposite. <laughs> he, yeah. <laughs> uh, new gameplay shown for a PS5 exclusive for Spoken. Uh, that game got delayed from May 25th to October 11th. But players looking forward to the game got another glimpse of gameplay. Uh, footage shown showed the protagonist Frey roaming around the open world taking on fantasy-inspired foes like dragons, undead creatures, and more. Did that get a delay? I just said it got delayed from May 25th to October 11th. That would answer my question. A a lot of people are worried for this game. It's weird with delays, because it means either one of two things. It means either they need more time to polish it and, like, make it better. Well, that, that is what it means, but... (laughs) <laughs> it's either because they know they have a good game and they just want to make sure it's absolutely perfect, or it's because they know they have a bad game and they need to try to fix this as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, I think that it's just like a lot of what we're seeing is kind of like empty. Like like there's, yeah. there's just a lot of particle effects and stuff, but it really just looks like an open like Unreal Engine like demo, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I kind of see the concerns that people people have. But uh, yeah, when is it coming out? October, October eleventh. Okay, there is there is some time. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got Gundam Evolution. With uh, it has a Western release date for later this year. The game is a six v six competitive online first person shooter featuring the giant mechs. There you go. Uh, you'd expect from Gundam. Uh, also learned that there is a network test coming this spring oh. for players in the U.S. and Japan. It will be released on PS4, PS5, Xbox, and PC. So this is weird because uh, the gameplay looks exactly like Overwatch. <laughs> but so, it's uh, Gundam. Yeah, I know. It's it's it's. This is a weird one. It's just it yeah. looks like it looks like. <laughs> I was watching. And I was like, this looks like a knockoff. And then I was like, oh, because it's just Overwatch. <laughs> but, I mean, it's a Gundam so, game, so it shouldn't feel like that. So I remember when Overwatch came out, there was like a ra- uh, like a, like a bunch of like hero shooters is what they called it. It was Overwatch, Battleborn, a couple of others. Of course, Overwatch was the big one. That was the one that everybody picked and played. And I wonder if this game is like a few years too late for that craze. I, I you know? just feel I don't I don't think so. I think they just needed to design the HUD differently. <laughs> True. Like, if they just made the HUD different, it wouldn't feel like an Overwatch ripoff. But yeah. the HUD is exactly like Overwatch. Like, Valorant already has some, like, Overwatch, like, like vibes. But yeah. it looks completely different. So, I mean, I, I feel like they just could have... They, they, they copied their homework a little too closely. Yeah. Uh. Anyway. Well, anyway. The next of one 80s nostalgia is one that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: The Cowabunga Collection is announced for this year. Uh, the, the, this announced... this is the one when this was announced, I was like, "Oh, this is a good state of play." Yeah. And this was the last and, good and thing it, they announced. <laughs> I just think I just think it's incredible that during the state of play, a um, for lack of a better word, press conference designed to showcase the latest and greatest of what the PlayStation 5 has to offer. The game that got everybody the most excited was a collection of games from the NES and SNES era. Yes. It's because we're not into JRPGs. If we were, we would have been stoked for this state of play. Well, I think, I think not just us. You look at the reaction on Twitter. Everybody is talking about the Cowabunga collection. Yes, yes. <laughs> and nothing else. This is a collection of 13 it's uh, classic Ninja Turtles games. And it's it's the original arcade game, Turtle and Turtles in Time. It's the NES game, the NES version of the arcade game, the Manhattan Projects, the third NES game, the SNES version of Turtles in Time, the Hyperstone Heist, which is essentially the Genesis version of Turtles in Time. It is all three Game Bo- original Game Boy games, and it is all three versions of Tournament Fighters, the NES, Genesis, and SNES versions. 
That is crazy. Yes. This is the most complete and best uh, case scenario you could imagine. Because this is literally all the Ninja Turtle games you would want to play. I can't believe there's Game Boy games. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised they threw them in there. Yeah. That's wild. I, I want to yeah. I wanna get it just for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, f- this, this will also be released on everything, including the Switch. And that's where I'll be playing it. Um, I'm excited because I, you know, it's Konami and I know everybody hates Konami, but credit where it's due, their retro collections like Castlevania and, uh, what was the other one? Contra. Those have been very good. And I'm hoping that this is also very good. I th- I think they saw the, uh, potential in those retro collections. People get really hyped with that. So they, they were like, yeah. what else could we, could we scrounge up? And then they had some interns scrolling through and they said hey some random ass company is making a new ninja turtles game that looks exactly like ours well <laughs> let's remind the world of our ninja turtle games and there's what would you say 13 teen that's crazy getting pretty much every ninja turtle game you would want to play yeah that's insane yeah uh and then what else do we have ah who cares <laughs> Kaiju Brawler Gigabash is coming to PS5 and PS4. Uh, if you're a fan of Godzilla Destroy All Monsters, you'll probably like this. It's a Kaiju Brawler coming to PS5 and PS4. Gameplay footage showed off top-down four-player battles between giant Kaiju monsters that evoked the likes of Godzilla and friends. What's better, the fights seem to take place among skyscrapers and other locations that get absolutely wrecked during the battles. Yeah. Uh, okay. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's a good concept. It's not, you know, not a terrible idea. There hasn't really been like a good kaiju game in a long time. So I'll allow it. Um. Uh, the ne- next they have JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Apparently this is a remake. <laughs> yes. Uh, This is JoJo's All-Star Battle R. Uh. You could play as over 50 different characters. Uh, the trailer shows that all the personalities and wackiness from the anime are intact, and it is coming to all major platforms this fall. Uh, yeah, not a lot of people knew, including myself, not a lot of people knew this uh, was a game already. But apparently it was like, what system was it on? It was for like the NES or something ridiculous. It was like really old. This on the NES? Or GameCube? Maybe. It was it was a Japanese only thing before right. the anime made it to America. Okay. Whoa, my computer's doing some stuff right now. PlayStation One, somebody says in the chat. Okay, well it's all over the place then. Oh, it's got to be PlayStation One. Yeah. Well, it can't be NES. That wouldn't make any sense. Ocho's Bizarre Adventure All Star Battle was originally released on the PlayStation Three. Oh. And this is the the remake, and it's coming to it's even coming to Switch. I was very wrong. Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox, and PC. Well, okay, then. I'm glad we clarified. Yes. Uh, new trailer for Black and White Samurai Adventure Trek to Yomi. Uh, this, everybody in the chat was like, this is a Bob game. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> this is secretly a Will game because I love Black and White Samurai movies. Uh, Trek to Yomi looks like a gorgeous homage to classic samurai cinema, and we get our best look at it uh, in the state of play. It appears to be an intense one-on-one sword uh, combat, as well as platforming and exploration through a black and white world. It is coming to PS4 and PS5 in spring. Yeah, this looks like basically Samurai Metroid in a way. I don't know if it's a Metroidvania necessarily, but I am all for this. I'd imagine it's pretty linear. But uh, yeah, it's 2D, but the graphics look great. Yeah, uh, and it's all black and white. Mm-hmm. Uh, it kind of just looks like um, Sifu, but 2D, and you have weapons. It, yeah, or like Ghost of Tsushima, but 2D. Right. Like this is the this is the aesthetic Ghost of Tsushima wanted to have, but knew that doing black and white by default was probably you know not market savvy in a triple a world in 2021 or whenever it came out 
But this looks like it's a more lower scale indie game and they can take risks like making a black and white game in the 21st century. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's my thought on it. For the record, there was a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure for the Super Famicom, but it was Mm. an RPG. And there was a fighting game on PlayStation 1. There you go. It was just called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And also Dreamcast. Uh, next up, Returnal Ascension campaign co-op update coming later this month. Now, uh, this looks kind of sick. Now, I I, I yeah. liked Returnal until I found out that I couldn't save and then I got mad. And now you can save, so that might draw some interest. And now you can drag a buddy with you. Yes, titled Ascension, the update brings a two-player campaign co-op to the game as well as a brand new survival mode about scaling a tower, taking out waves upon waves of Returnal's enemies as you go. Uh, It will be available March 22nd. Mm -hmm. So if you've been looking for a reason to play Returnal, there you go. Uh, Okay, and then we have the two... Final RPGs that were the, yes. the one more uh, thing Square, that we didn't really care about. Square Enix announces a strategy RPG called Dio Field Chronicle, uh, a fully 3D take on the strategy game, and the trailer set up the story of Three Kingdoms. The game will focus on. It will also launch on Switch, Xbox, and PC. And then there's Valkyrie Elysium for PS4 and PS5 coming later this year. Uh, the game is a new entry in Square Enix's Valkyrie Profile series, which hasn't seen a new home console entry since Val- Valkyrie Profile 2 on the PlayStation 2. Uh, we got a quick look of gameplay, uh, which showed off magic and sword combat against beast-like foes. And that's it. Uh, so the Dio Field Chronicle looks really weird. Yeah. That the actual looks gameplay like a- looks like pretty low budget but then they have like then they have like triangle strategy type illustrations on the screen yeah and the uh, cut scenes are bizarre as like kind of bizarrely animated it's it's yeah, very I don't, strange i know like the japanese like tactics games get like very technical and i know like i am just going to fall asleep <laughs> trying to play this game and Valkyrie is Elysium. Like I checked out when that last game when Dio Field was on screen and then mm-hmm. Valkyrie Elysium kind of just blended into it and I just I just like zoned out. But it is a very yeah. different game. This looks this looks like Genshin Impact. <laughs> yeah, this looks much more my speed. <laughs> oh yeah, this is an actual like like it's not turn based or action anything. You're game, actually yeah. fighting. Hey, it's an action game. This yeah. looks kinda cool actually. I didn't even see this. I I, I was checked out. <laughs> This looks kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, it's like a got a weird, like almost cell shaded, like like style. Yeah. Like the character has like an outline, but it's not cell shaded. And the backgrounds and the environments are are rendered like 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 real life rendered. Like the, the yeah, this is a bizarre art style too. Yeah, but you whatever. Know. It could it could work? Who knows? Who knows? Oh, uh, that was your March 2022 state of play. Not a bad showing. I think we can all agree the Ninja Turtles won. <laughs> yes. Uh, I go into state of plays with the lowest of expectations. Yes. So in this case, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, because yeah. oh, this, you, this was a good one. Usually I come out of state of plays and I'm like, why did we even have to have this? This could have been an email. Why do we have to have this meeting? <laughs> uh, but I think they've learned. I, I think they've been saving their good announcements. Now there's yeah. going to be another uh, state of play. Yeah, I just wanted to mention real quick. On Thursday, there's going to be another state of play dedicated to the that upcoming Harry Potter game, Hogwarts Legacy. Right. So it's 20 uh, minutes you will long. be able to... You will be able to decide if you can stomach giving J.K. Rowling a little bit more money just to play a Harry Potter video game. Yeah, I'm not a big Harry Potter fan, so I will not Neither be attending I, so. this, this meeting. I mean, I'm I'm curious about it because, you know, just to see what they can do with a Harry Potter video game. 
especially a Harry Potter video game that takes place in the 19th century. Not mm-hmm. even like during the time frame of the Harry Potter books. So, because I have a theory, and if you're a Harry Potter fan, give me a second. Let me explain. <laughs> I don't think Harry Potter fans care about any story in this world that doesn't involve Harry, Hermione, and Ron. Mm-hmm. Because nobody talks about Fantastic Beasts until the movie comes out, and then they just forget about it. Nobody talks about like any of the other random shit that JK like has farted out in the years since Deathly Hallows. Um, it's always either the books and you'll get the occasional person talk about how good the play was. That's it. So I'm interested to see if uh, Warner Brothers Interactive and Avalanche can create a game compelling enough for Harry Potter fans to play that doesn't involve the three main characters. So I, I'd imagine the Fantastic Beast movies do well, it, but you're right. I never hear anybody talk about them. Apparently the second one did not. Oh. And they like had to completely redo their plans for that series. Right. Based on that. Because <laughs> it's supposed to be like six of them, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Lubick um, says, Harry Potter, cringe. He's right. <laughs> He's so I mean, well. again... I- I don't hate the Harry Potter series. I'm like not as heavily invested in it. So like, I don't really care all that much. Um, I I know JK Rowling is a gross human being. That's about it. (laughs) So yeah, I don't know what the, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, I know, uh, I don't know why anybody continues to work with her, I guess, because she's a cash cow, you know? (laughs) Oh yeah. No, there's a lot (laughs) of money. They're kind of forced to. But again, there's a lot of money in Potter, but I think it's only with regards to the original seven books. Right, right. Nothing else. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's room for something, but uh, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there could be, but so far, nobody seems to be, nobody seems to be interested in anything outside of the adventures of Ron. Isn't Harry Harry like the guy? Isn't he like? Isn't he like the one in the Harry Potter world? Can't yeah, there so be that's other the, ones like so before that was him? The interesting thing about Harry Potter, he was touted as like the chosen one, but he kind of sucked. He was like just <laughs> he was just an average schmuck. You know, he wasn't a great student. He wasn't a great wizard. Uh, a lot of people thought that the chosen one could also be um, Neville Longbottom because he also had a similar backstory to Harry and he also really sucked. <laughs> so that, that so, was like the interesting thing about Harry. Yeah. So why weren't there ones previous to him? I, Cause I guess, you know, my understanding of Harry Potter is very limited. I guess it's because Harry, because of Harry's connection to Snape, not Snape, uh, Voldemort. Right. And Voldemort, I guess only existed a couple of years before Harry, not the 19th century. Because, like, the whole thing with Star Wars is uh, we only cared about Luke and Leia and Han until they started making other Jedis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, they could just do that. Like, have other, the yeah. ones, and then we'll have new characters to to enjoy. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, did we get any notifications? Yes, we did. We got Mars with 21 months. Bob, you genius bastard. You made me jealous enough of your pro controller to do it myself. Congratulations, Mars. Uh, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you, 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 I I hope you, I hope you're enjoying your new clicky pro controller. Where did Uh, you get the the shell for your pro controller? Amazon. It's extreme rate. Okay. Cause I, I would like, cause I just have the regular black one and I hate, that you can only ever get just the regular black one. I want to like right. customize it somehow. So I might have it to is get myself a shell for it. Very easy. Yeah. It is super easy. Yeah, I'm just gonna, have a wide I'm just gonna do a I'm just gonna do a shell swap. I'm not gonna like mess with the buttons or anything. Right. I mean the white buttons are nice. And that's not too hard. Right. No, uh, I know. But but yeah, the the switch is kind of hard. Kind of tricky to do. Yeah, that I'm not doing. Uh anyway. Uh, we also got then, Lula Lunatic with 10 months. You guys should check out Dawn of the Monsters. What the hell's that? 
Uh, well, let's check it out. Is Wait, that the freaking kaiju battler we just talked about? I think so. Oh, uh, Edward Bova brought this up before. Oh, no, it's just something else. Edward Bova brought this up before. Apparently, the guys who made 1080 snowboarding and I think Star Fox, uh, uh, they made a snowboarding game called Carve Snowboarding for the Oculus Quest. Interesting. I don't know how I feel about how much you're moving around in this game. Like, I don't <laughs> like VR games where you're moving around. It freaks me out. Yeah, yeah. VR games where you move around, like, you got to handle, like, very specifically for some reason if i'm in a car or a mech or something my brain mm -hmm. is able to like like handle it but right. if it's just the person moving it i can't i can't do it i guess because like your brain heart if it's like in a car or a mech your brain thinks you're in a vehicle and you're going for right. a ride Right. So, like, the outside world is, like, just that. It's outside to you. Whereas right. if you're just walking around, the outside world is supposed to be, you know, the inside world to an extent. Right. Um, anyway. Uh, next, we have the Steam Deck now runs Windows Final. Yay. Yay. Well, it kind of does. So, I've seen... I've, but, uh, I've seen... Do they talk about the Fox in this? Because he got it. No, he didn't. He was doing uh So here's the thing. He was doing Linux. So you can now install Windows 10 on the Steam Deck and actually expect it to work because Valve has released the important GPU, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth drivers you'll need to download uh. and play games. Importantly, you'll need to wipe your Steam Deck to do this, and there is no dual boot yet. Oh, no. Uh, so Valve says... And Valve says you can only install Windows 10 since the current Steam Deck BIOS apparently doesn't include firmware TPM support, which Microsoft infamously requires for Windows 11. Also, your speakers and headphone jack won't work yet because there's no audio drivers. However, oh. Bluetooth or USB-C audio should, be, should work for now. You can find Valve's Windows on Deck page right here. And the Steam Deck recovery instructions right here in case you screw up or run into one of the deck's unfortunate bugs to get to the boot menu, power down, then uh, while holding the volume down button, click the power button. That's how you reboot the Steam Deck. So, I mean, like, I, I thought it was obvious that there's going to be some problems when you go into Windows 10. I mean, I mean, I, th I kind of assumed it would be easy to put Windows 10 on this thing. The problem would be trying to run the games. Like, the games wouldn't run as good yeah. on Windows 10 as they would on the Linux system, uh, even using their own Proton, like, system or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I didn't expect this. I didn't expect it to have this many uh, uh, kind of caveats. Um, yeah. So that's that's pretty disappointing. I think the biggest caveat here is that you have to wipe your system. You you basically yeah. have to choose between uh, Steam OS or Windows 10. I don't think it's a yeah. big deal that you can't do Windows 11. I still don't do Windows 11. Um, yeah, I, most people haven't switched over to Windows 11 yet. But that's kind of sad. Yeah. Uh, I, hope, I hope that gets sorted out. But, I, but again, I feel like I mean, I want to see, like, who's done this and what type of, uh, like, benchmarks you're running on these games. Like, I want to see a game on Windows running versus a game on Linux running and see uh, I how much worse Linus, it runs. I think Linus Tech Tips did that. And I, if I remember correctly, they said, don't do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So uh, this article mm -hmm. set, uh, has an update. There's two updates because um, the writer said that they'll install Windows 10 on their review unit um, and then update March 11th. Mixed results so far. Seeing slightly higher frame rate, but there's hitches in Elden Ring, but lower frame rate in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, having issues getting some other games to install and play from the SD card. Trying to troubleshoot that now. Bluetooth audio works, but with the same lag seen in Linux. Weird glitches with big picture mode and sadly the navigation buttons like Steam and the dot 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 buttons do nothing in Windows, but <laughs> you know everybody saw that coming. And then an update on March 14th, 
Valve says it's reproduced the bug with the SD card and has uploaded a new SD card reader driver that uh, will hopefully fix the issue. Uh, interesting. Yeah. So this seems like a, I mean, this is a pre-release unit. They should have just, they, I don't know. I feel like the launch of the Steam Deck was a huge mess. Uh, and, uh, it's not anywhere near done yet. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I feel like, well, we've seen this with like a lot of tech products now, like they release their products in beta and we're yeah. the beta test. Uh, it, it's, think, that, it's that coupled with the the trickled launch of it like like they're releasing them weekly yeah i also think too like again the steam deck is a very ambitious system right for like a company that is not known for hardware mm -hmm. so the fact that it works at all is a miracle but i think if they want this to have any sort of market penetration even close to the switch not even saying the same switch numbers but like in the same ballpark <laughs> yeah a fraction of that they they should have launched this in a more stable state but who knows when that would have been it could have been this year it could have been within the next four years so, so i view the steam deck as an enthusiast device like people who are PC guys who like to tinker around would get a steam deck to yes. tinker around while they're out and about or whatever um, mm -hmm. but those very same people see this thing as the switch killer. Like, like this yeah. is going to be, uh, the, I, I mean, look it, from the reviews I've seen, the user experience looks great. Uh, especially if you're just staying in the steam OS or whatever. Um, yeah. but all of these other things that people were hoping that the steam deck would be able to do, uh, seem to have fallen a little short so far. Then yeah. again, nobody's been able to get their hands on this thing. So, yeah. so like they still have a lot of time to iron out these kinks before the general public even gets their hands on this. There's, yeah. I, I'd like to see some sales numbers, but I'm pretty sure there's been very little Steam decks in actual customers' hands so far. Yeah. Um. So in addition to this, uh, being able to run Windows on a Steam Deck, Microsoft has now provided an update for its own support of Valve Steam Deck. Oh. Uh, most Xbox Game Studios titles will run on Steam Deck, but Microsoft has said that Gears 5, the Master Chief Collection, Halo Infinite, and Microsoft Flight Simulator are unsupported. These titles don't work on the Steam Deck due to anti-cheat systems, but it's not clear if they'll oh. ever be supported in the future. Microsoft has marked eight games as verified and six more as playable. The difference between the two can be something as small as a warning appearing or even having to invoke a virtual touchscreen to enter text during a game. While some of while some are only on the playable list right now, they uh they could soon progress to the verified status. Microsoft's list only covers Xbox Game Studio titles currently available on Steam, but you can now install Windows on the Steam Deck and access Game Pass games. Valve uh, released Windows drivers, so the option is open for Steam Deck owners to switch over. And Valve CEO Gabe Newell has welcomed Microsoft to launch Game Pass on Steam last month, saying he's more than happy to work with them to get uh, that on Steam. So these are the full list of Microsoft Game Studio verified. Uh, these are the verified games, uh, Microsoft Game Studio games. Deathloop, Psychonauts 2, Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, The Evil Within, Fallout Shelter, Prey, hmm. Battletoads, and Max, The Curse of Brotherhood. These are the playable games. So these are games that you can play, but there might be some issues here and there sea of thieves fallout 4 horizon uh forza horizon 4 and 5 quantum break and state of decay and then unsupported again gears 5 the master chief collection halo infinite and flight simulator i feel like halo infinite that sucks that that's not supported um yeah, yeah but, that, that, uh, i mean the anti-cheat makes sense um i think all four of those unsupported games are 
big losses because those My, are the yeah. four biggest games. <laughs> Microsoft Flight Simulator is a big deal too. Uh, yeah. Forza Horizon 5 being playable is great news. I'd imagine yes. that the text might be small and maybe there's some, I don't know, there's some controller like like overlay problems, but mm -hmm. otherwise I feel like Forza Horizon 5 would probably be fine and, uh, and I'm happy that that works because I, I, I would... That's a game I would totally play on the Steam Deck. I think it's interesting that all the verified games, the games that will work on the Steam Deck, no questions asked, are all games that were released before Microsoft bought their respective studios. <laughs> so these were games that were going to be on uh, Steam no matter what. Deathloop, uh, Evil Within, Prey, uh, Fallout Shelter, those are all Bethesda games. Um, Psychonauts 2 is a double fine game. Hellblade is uh, Ninja Theory. It, it, it could be because uh, they Microsoft was putting these games on their own storefront and not on Steam, right? Like like they like Microsoft was putting their own games on their own storefront. These verified right. games, these were already on Steam. Yes. So like yeah, they're gonna work fine on on the Steam Deck. Um, so that's good news. I mean. That doesn't yeah. say anything for Game Pass, but uh, have no. you know what? Having friggin' Forza Horizon Five just on the on the Steam Deck, playable, ready to go, not even streaming. That sounds great. Yeah, I think, and I think this is a good first step. You know, if they're just acknowledging that you can play these games mm -hmm. on Steam Deck, uh, that's a good first step to a acknowledging the device and b. You know, putting a, you know your toe in the water to see if this is successful. Maybe they will find a way to bring Game Pass over to it. So what kind of sucks though is that like, how do I play Forza Horizon Five if I have Game Pass? Can I? I guess I can't get it on Steam, right? I'd have to pay for it. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, because it would be the Steam version of Forza Horizon. Do they have Game Pass on Linux? Because then you can just download the game on Linux and then. Uh, Add it as a I mean, as a non Steam I guess game. You, you can play it through your browser, but that would be streaming. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully they figure out a way to let me link my Game Pass to it. That'd be great. Yeah. Um. Otherwise, I'm not gonna play that game on on my Steam Deck because I don't. I'm yeah. not paying for it. I have it on Game Pass. I got it on my Aya and Neo. I don't. I'm not. I'm not paying another sixty dollars for it, right? Uh, can't you just download Windows Ten then download Steam? Uh, yeah, you could uh, listen back a few minutes and talk about how, yeah. uh, where we talk about how putting Windows Ten on a Steam Deck is a hot mess. Yeah, uh, not recommended in its current state, it and probably wouldn't even play Forza. Although they said Elden Ring runs, and Elden Ring has a lot of problems and really high system requirements. So, yeah, if you can get that going. Anyway, uh, fake GameCube portable is now a, th a real thing. I didn't even ever see this render, I don't think. I've seen this render, um, but it was like, you know, it's it's one of those things where, like, you see on the internet and, like, it just fades in the back of your mind. You don't really mm -hmm. pay much attention to it. Right. Uh, this guy clearly has been haunted by it. Uh, <laughs> it it's still no easy feat. Uh, but creating a realistic 3D render of a miniaturized console is nowhere near as difficult as building the real thing. But that didn't stop YouTuber Ginger of Oz from building a handheld portable GameCube based on nothing but a concept pick that's been floating around the internet since 2005. Miniaturizing a modern console is hard enough, but doing so while forcing yourself to, the, uh, to be constrained to a design that never actually existed as real hardware takes a challenge to another level, as hard as Ginger of Oz tried to stay true to the original render, they were forced to make some compromises along the way. Using custom designed 3D printed parts made uh, recreating the overall look of the Nintendo GameCube Advance mostly painless, and the overall size was compromised between the scale of the, render mod the rendered model based on the size of a GameCube disc in the image and the size of an LCD display that would be incorporated into its lid. The concept's hinge uh, had to be redesigned for usability, and Ginger of Oz took inspiration and some hardware from a clamshell Nintendo 3DS handheld uh, to build it. Wow. The portable GameCube's joystick was also salvaged from 
a 3DS, and along with some 3D printed miniature buttons, was recessed to allow the handheld's lid to close without destroying the LCD yes. in the process. <laughs> That's a bad design on the 3D uh, yeah. models part. <laughs> Inside the modded GameCube is where the most compromises had to be made. It is impossible to fit a disk drive inside a custom housing, so the slot, uh, so the slot on the front exists mostly for cosmetic reasons. Mm. Although a game disc can still be slid inside, there is also no actual GameCube parts inside the GameCube Advance. Instead, Ginger of Oz opted for a Nintendo Wii hardware, which okay. is less power hungry much easier to trim and miniaturize and more compatible with custom software. That's the fine. final creation. Yeah. I mean, the famously, uh, I forgot who it was said the Wii is just two game cubes duct taped together. So <laughs> you got to use a Wii. You can use yeah, a Wii. Like, uh, yeah. I, I was thinking you were going to break the bad news that this was like an Android emulator or something. And that was going to yeah. upset me, but having a Wii in there, that's fine. That's totally fine. Yeah. It, it's still essentially original hardware. It's just a more advanced version of the original hardware. Right. Uh, the final creation plays ROM files instead of games on disc, but since the Wii was fully compatible with the GameCube, all of the games from the console's library uh, play absolutely perfectly on this thing. Just not for very long because of space constraints inside the housing. There was only room in there was only enough room for two rechargeable batteries, providing less than an an hour and a half of gameplay. So, like a switch. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what might uh, be even more impressive than Ginger Vaz's build is the fact that they successfully tracked down the artist who created the three D render of the Nintendo GameCube Advance that inspired the project. The designer created a mock-up in the early aughts as a way to practice using a 3D modeling app called 3D Studio Max, now known as 3DS Max, uh, while studying art in college and to see if their skills were up to the task of fooling the internet masses, which uh, were apparently just as gullible then as they are now. This is a really good job. And they said that he cut some yeah. corners, but nah, dude. He did. He did yeah, like, it looks pretty damn close. It, so it's the like naked almost eye, exact. Like, yeah, this is exactly. This is, It's the thing. It's the, He made the thing. Yeah. The, the, some things had to change, like the hinge. Like, like there was no yeah. way this is, is, is a real thing. You know, with, with, this yeah. doesn't even have a hinge. Um, yeah, no, and the thumbstick being recessed that just had to have happened. But other otherwise, yeah, like, everything is beautiful. Everything is there. Yeah. The only 100%. thing that's upsetting is the uh, disk drive, but that's another thing that like realistically could have never happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but that's fan I, I can't believe it's 3D printed. It does not look 3D printed at all. No, it's glossy it like and like awesome made. Yeah. Yeah. Probably sanded uh, it, it is down a shame and glossed that over. It's a shame that uh, I will never get my hands on this thing because I really want one. <laughs> so they have uh, devices like this where you can take a Wii and make it portable and stuff. Um, yeah. But the kits on Etsy are like $800. Yeah, because you have to so. actually like mess with the motherboard of right. the Wii. Like, like actually cut it down. Yeah, so it doesn't doesn't seem worth it to me. Yeah, uh, but this looks pretty f phenomenal for for for, for uh, podcast listeners. It looks like a Game Boy Advance SP, but very large and uh, uh, yeah, plays GameCube games. Um. Anyway, so props. What was the name of the YouTuber again? Ginger of Oz. Ginger of Oz. Good job, bro. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights, the upcoming Batman game that does not star Batman. Um, it's uh, Warner Brothers Montreal has a new release date. Uh, it is now coming out October 25th this year. Originally scheduled for launch in the end of 2021. The game was delayed due to the need for additional development time, according to the de developer. Um, we are giving the game more time to deliver the best possible experience for players. We look forward to showcasing more of the game in the coming months. Uh I am getting sound I don't want to be played. Why won't you mute? That's not my All right. fault. It's your fault. Yeah. I'm just gonna do that. Okay. You gotta mute you gotta <laughs> mute all the game sites. All the game sites I know weird stuff. I'm I'm in Safari right now and I'm like there is this there is an option to mute the tab, but I'm not seeing it for this particular tab. So 
I'm mad. Anyway, <laughs> if you forgot about it, Gotham Knights takes place in a world where Bruce Wayne is dead. Wink. Uh, leaving <laughs> Gotham vulnerable to criminal gangs, supervillains, and owl-themed secret societies uh, that the Dark Knight has kept in check. Fortunately, his protégés Nightwing, Batgirl, Robin, and Red Hood have stepped up to protect the city. An open-world game. Uh, this isn't the only DC-related title in development, as Arkham Knight Studio Rocksteady is working on Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. While the game featuring DC's most notorious super criminals is currently scheduled for uh, 2022 as well, there are reports that it's been delayed to 2023. In other Batman news, the movie is good. An ARG website uh, seeming, seemingly created to tease the sequel uh, has also been up and running, and you should check that out as well. Only if you've seen the movie, though. Uh movie was great. Yes. I don't know what you did. And I hope this game... You, you yeah. froze. Yeah, I'm going to... I'll leave and come back. Okay. Uh, this Gotham Knights thing just seems like an excuse to make another Ar Arkham game without making an, an Arkham game. <laughs> I'm back. And yes, you are right. That is exactly what it looks like for some reason. <laughs> um, it is weird that they're... That you know, we need to make another Batman game. Oh, let's do the sidekicks. <laughs> yeah. It'd be cool um, if uh, uh, Dick Grayson just becomes Batman. That'd be cool. Yeah, do that story. Um, that said, I am, you know, obviously I'm interested in it. I want to play it. I, you know, I like Batman, but I like all of his sidekicks too. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how this game, we'll see how this game pans out. Next news, we have Nintendo delays Advanced War Switch because there is an actual Advanced War happening. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, good on them for understanding the current climate. Maybe a cartoon war game is not the best option, but at the same time, it's like, I think we we can tell the difference between so, so real, I, reality and fantasy. <laughs> when I first heard this, when I first saw the tweet, I was like, I was like, it's not the same like it's a cartoon it's like clearly yeah. like not an issue but then i heard the story is legitimately russia is invading a neighboring country <laughs> so it's so like the, it's like okay this it's a little too on the nose maybe the tweet the tweet is in light of recent world world events we've made the decision to delay advance wars one and two reboot camp was was originally scheduled to release on the nintendo switch on april 8th Please stay tuned for updates on the new release date. Uh, yeah, players engage in turn-based battles using infantry, artillery, and vehicles like tanks, helicopters uh, to conquer enemies and take control of the cities and armories. While the Switch remake of Advanced Wars 1 and 2 is rated E10 uh, for mild violence, the games seemingly feel inappropriate for release in the current climate uh, from Nintendo's perspective. In late February, Russian troops moved into the Ukraine from the east and the north uh, through existing neighbor uh, through the through neighboring Belarus. Uh, fighting has since intensified with hundreds of casualties. Large large scale assault adds to more than fourteen thousand people killed in eastern Ukraine since twenty fourteen conflict with Russia began. Hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians are leaving the country as refugees, according to the Kiev Independent. And as many citizens, including game developers in the region, hold their ground to fight Russia's army. Yeah, so I uh, at first I was uh, I thought this was stupid. But after uh, being told that it's basically the same story, I was like, OK, I see why I, it makes yeah, sense. That I, this I, is a good move. You know, I under, yeah. Like, and I know what I said before, but. I, it is better to err on the side of caution, and if they if they have to delay this game until the conflict is over, then it's understandable. Um, hopefully, the conflict ends soon and peacefully. Right. <laughs> you know, not just for this game, just because th there shouldn't be a fucking war going on in you know that side of the world. I'm still curious what's going to happen with Call of Duty because Modern Warfare Two is Russia invading. So, well, remember the. Uh, it's not going to be a remake of the original Modern Warfare 2. This mm -hmm. is a sequel to the more recent Modern Warfare we got. But isn't it still so a Russian can... war? Is it not? Is it not at all the same story? I don't remember. I don't remember. Did the one from a couple years ago. The Yeah. Yeah, that was a complete reboot. I understand, but they didn't even... 
is a different are they there's the war a different country <laughs> dude that game like not even close like, i don't even honestly dude like i played that game and like it just glazed over me i was like i was like this games like, i mean that always happens sucks. with call of duty games i that the the story doesn't register except the only yeah. story that registered was the original modern warfare games when russia invaded new york city <laughs> yeah uh, 2019. The game takes place uh, in a realistic and modern setting. Campaign follows CIA and British SAS forces as they team up with rebels uh, from the fictional country of Urkistan. So fiction... Uh, combating together against Russian forces who have invaded the country and a terrorist group. Uh, okay, mm, so yeah. It's there not you Russian, go. That's really now we're yeah, talking... Okay. Okay. People in the chat the, say the, there's going to be no Call of Duty until 2023, and that was not confirmed, I don't think. No, we are getting a Call of Duty game this year. Next year's Call of Duty game might be delayed. That's yes. what the rumor was. Yes. yes. So this um, year is supposed to be Modern Warfare 2. Yes. So that's why I'm like, some that doesn't seem right. Yeah. Um... I mean, the difference is uh, Nintendo is a much more uh, lighthearted company and mm -hmm. understand that, like, sometimes things need to change. Uh, Activision is a much more evil company and does not give a fuck what you think. They need to release a Call of Duty game because the shareholders must be satisfied. So, and yeah, Microsoft doesn't no, have a control man, over them yet. No. <laughs> It's gonna it's gonna be a little bit so that's yeah. why i think next year's call of duty is rumored to be delayed because uh that's when microsoft is finally gonna have some, some well pull. allegedly the delay has nothing to do with the microsoft takeover yeah i don't believe that <laughs> uh anyway here's some new fun stuff uh perfect dark reboot i'm very excited about this perfect dark reboot yeah uh Studio reportedly seeing staff departures due to slow development process. Oh, Damn that's it. That's not fun. A new report suggests that Microsoft's The Initiative, the studio developing a reboot of Perfect Dark, has suffered significant staff departures over the past 12 months. Staff are apparently leaving the company due to a lack of creative autonomy and slow development progress. The report from VGC is compiled from interviews with the unnamed X initiative employees and analysts of the studio structure. It notes that around 34 people have quit within the last year, including much of the senior design team game director, Dan Newberger uh, appears to have left the team this year. And previous departures include design director, Drew Murray, uh, lead level designer, Chris O'Neill, uh, principal world builder, Jolyn Mayers, uh, and several more from the core team. Additionally, VGC notes that two senior writers recently left, as well as the technical director, the technical art director, the lead gameplay engineer, lead animation, uh, quality assurance lead, and more. VGC's interviews with the former initiative staff uh, suggest that the departures have come fast and furious, uh, something that has impacted the momentum of the project. Reasons given for staff departure predominantly includes a feeling that the studio was not a collaborative place of work, it was apparently built as a top-down hierarchy, starting with Newberger and the studio head, Daryl Gallagher, who heavily dictated the creative decisions. Staff apparently felt unheard by the seniors on issues such as development priorities, project planning, and team staffing. The alleged result of this was a project that developed painfully slow and a lack of company and had a lack of company culture. Making games is hard enough, let alone when you feel like you can't get through to the people making the decisions that affect everyone, the source says. Yeah, uh, uh, th that, that's upsetting because I've... I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I didn't play Perfect Dark Zero, but I love the original, and I, I think yeah. that there's plenty of room for a, for a, for oh, a new absolutely. entry in that. Yeah. I think they totally fucked up Perfect Dark Zero. That, that, that had yeah. bad reviews. Yeah. Um... VGC sources also claim that the culture problem was part of the reason for bringing in Crystal Dynamics on board as a collaborator studio. 
Gallagher and Newberger were previous studio heads and game directors respectively at Crystal Dynamics, and it was hoped that a team familiar with their management methods would work well with them. In a statement to VGC, Gallagher, who remains a studio head at the initiative, said, in this journey, it is not uncommon for there to be staffing changes, especially during a time of global upheaval over the last two years, and there are there's plenty more work in front of us to deliver a fantastic Perfect Dark experience to our players. We wish all of our former colleagues the very best, and I am confident in this in the team we have in place, uh, the new talent joining, and we can't wait to share more with the fans. Uh, the report suggests, the report sources suggest that the large change to staff and the inclusion of Crystal Dynamics may well have triggered the internal soft reboot of Perfect Dark, and a final release could well still be a few years away. Oh, so they they are remaking the game, like essentially, like, yeah. Like they they didn't like what they had, and they're doing they're pulling a they're pulling a Metroid Prime. Yes. That's very upsetting. This is going to be yeah. a ways off. When this was dropped yeah. at E3, I lost my mind. But we yeah, haven't I mean, had heard anything like, since then. Yeah, and and it's disappointing because this was like this could have been one of their biggest IPs since they bought Rare, but they've just you know not done. They've messed it up, you know, at every turn. Yeah, you know, Perfect Dark Zero sucks. Um, <laughs> the remake that they, the remaster that they put out. Uh, in 2010 on Xbox Live was great, um, but like they just didn't do anything with it. And then they develop, they create a studio specifically to make Perfect Dark, and it's like falling apart on the inside. Yeah. Uh, so that's not good news. I'm not happy about that. I I I, I want that game. Yeah, that's and, yeah. and and it's not looking good because if they're if they're losing guys, I mean maybe maybe they're doing a soft reboot and that's why they're losing people. Maybe this is a good opportunity for them to restaff, but uh, it's not looking good. No, it's not a good. Sign. No, and this and you know this comes after years of like Microsoft, you know, buying game studios and creating game studios specifically to get games made for their platform for a Game Pass. You know, after years of not doing that, after being like a distant third to sony and nintendo uh and here they you know their their own internal studio that they made themselves tasked to bring back one of their classic ips just just falling apart this is a problem they had during the xbox one era you know this is why Scalebound was canceled this is why you know other games that they were working on were canceled this is why rare was like stuck making connects adventures for like too many years mm-hmm Okay. Uh, next news we have to plow through. Uh, yes. Mario 64 players guide from 1996 now online. These aren't the pictures that I saw. No, but I saw a different one. But you, you may, so, you may read. All right. So, long story oh, it's short, the whole thing. The, okay, never mind. Yeah, the original 1996 <laughs> Japanese players guide for Super Mario 64, complete with. Uh, commentary from Shigeru Miyamoto and others, and a set of gorgeous dioramas based on the game's levels uh, have been uploaded. All 152 pages have been scanned online in HD so that everyone can view and appreciate the work uh, that's gone into it. Uh, whole thing is in Japanese, but you know, Super Mario 64 is universal. Uh, you can check the whole thing out over on the Internet Archive. Yeah, so, so that is... that's what I was like. Like I saw a Twitter, you know, gallery of this, yeah. and it was just the dioramas, and the dioramas are crazy. Every, every level, yeah. uh, they like made like a little sculpture for it. It's like beautiful. Yeah, like it's a little insane. miniature. Yeah. Uh, my favorite is uh, Samui Samui Mountain, cold cold <laughs> mountain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's. It's awesome. Uh, unfortunately, all things in Japanese, but uh, yeah. it's got some incredible art that otherwise would have been lost. Yeah. I don't know why this is the archive.org thing. It's like the split down the middle is is bad. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of looking at this. I'm really upset that this was not the player's guide we got in America because we had the official Nintendo player's guide for Super Mario 64 and it didn't look anything like this. No, that was just screenshots and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, this is this is gorgeous. 
Um, anyway, so that's cool. If you want to take a look at that, it's on archive.org. You can probably search it up. Yes. Uh, anyway, the last bit of news that we have is a little public service announcement. Uh, Chocobo GP, the, the, the Chocobo kart racer everybody's been so excited to play. Uh, it has predatory microtransactions, so maybe don't get it for a kid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a Reddit post. It says, I want to offer a friendly community focused warning to anyone looking at uh, Chocobo GP on Nintendo Switch as someone who is a huge fan of Final Fantasy and original Chocobo racing game on the PlayStation. I didn't know there was an, orig an original Chocobo racing game. But also has worked in mobile gaming on these very mechanics for a larger part of my of their career. I cannot stress enough how much you should avoid this game, and here is why. Number one, it employs highly predatory monetization mechanics, which are normally only seen in Square Enix's most egregious free-to-play mobile games. Uh, I'll remind everybody that this game costs $60. Um, it constantly uses irritating and experience-diminishing mechanics to break your experience, offering you uh, options to pay to remove that stuff. Uh, the game is already a AAA priced box product, but uh, built entirely as a mobile game. The game costs 50 uh, British pounds, but has all the elements of a free to play and actually is a mobile game too in Japan, likely coming to EU and US soon. The only mm. good unlocks are basically only available through spending, even the quote gill unlocks are highly difficult to obtain without spending on currency uh and then that's that's it uh I cannot so stress enough uh how much you should not let your children play this aggressively dangerous and vile game it's not even a great racing game if that helps pull you away from talk taking the plunge mario kart 8 deluxe outplays the stinking turd of an abomination at every level <laughs> holy shit <laughs> Dude's really to, mad about it. I just want to confirm that it's sixty dollars. Oh, it's fifty. I mean, that's so th still that's way too much for a free to play game. They had to make up that extra ten dollars somehow. Yeah. So why not put a bunch of predatory microtransactions in there? It's insane that in in this day and age in twenty twenty two that game developers are still make you know charging full price for free to play games like this. Mm -hmm. You know, and and, and Square especially at the start of the PS4 Xbox One generation especially with all their western titles they were pulling that shit left and right Deus Ex Mankind Divided had a lot of like gaudy and pointless microtransactions in it uh Hitman the reason why that was episodic was because that's what mobile games were doing so do that it you know it's released it's ridiculous yeah, I don't know exactly what the microtransaction situation is, but it looks like it's one of those things where you like get currency for like logging in and playing a level and stuff. So like, uh, yeah, it, it looks like it's built pretty much exactly like a like a mobile game, which is very yeah. upsetting. <laughs> um. Anyway, that's all the news. I, Hooray, we did it. I did, however, just pull a tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. This is by our good buddy, Willow Davis. And he says, you're telling me your son dried these tomatoes? <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Anyway, one. we're going to talk to you people now. Yes. Uh, oh, do you want to do this? Sure. Okay. We're, we're going to do an unboxing real quick. Will, take we it away. Keep we keep forgetting to do this. Uh, we have a new gully kit controller. Um, the two pro King Kong two pro controller. So, this so, a... so I have yeah. the original King Kong. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is, uh, it has macros in it. You can program it to have macros. Okay. It's actually very useful for that. Otherwise it is almost identical to an Xbox one controller. <laughs> but the big yeah, deal yeah. with this one is mm -hmm. that the thumbsticks uh are like uh a drift uh driftless like like you can't drift them you can't they can't get okay. drift somehow that's interesting well first of all i like the little hard shell plastic case it comes in oh that's got, really cool i like that 
this looks exactly like an Xbox controller. That w- that hard shell case will probably work for an Xbox controller because I use. I, I'm going to try that. The one that I have now, I use as as a case for my Xbox controller. Yeah. So it looks like it's it could work on Windows, iOS, Android, and Switch. Uh, it also it's funny you mentioned the uh, the analog stick. Because it comes with the spare analog stick. Oh, the whole stick like box. The actual mechanism. That's the interesting. So, yeah, here's the controller itself. They're also, I think, working on making those stick boxes for the Steam Deck because the Steam Deck has stick boxes that you can uh, uh, remove. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, first impressions, it feels pretty good. It feels like a quality controller. Triggers are good. Buttons are... Oh, these buttons are a little place weird. Uh, Buttons are responsive. Placement is all good. It feels like a standard controller, more or less. So, that joystick that you're using on that thing... Yeah. ...is the joystick that is currently in the Aya Neo Next that I made a video on. Interesting. Oh, apparently they worked together for that. Mm-hmm. Let me see it. Bro. Show it to the screen again. Uh, I want to see the thumbstick specifically. No, 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 no. The, the, on the controller. On oh, the controller. Uh, tilted a little bit. I want to see under the thumbstick. Yeah. Okay. That looks that looks kind of similar. I think it was yeah. more like the, like the actual ball on the bottom was like a like gray. I think on the Ion Neo. Yeah. So built-in rechargeable battery it seems i have the instruction booklet here it's got it's they call it hall sensing Uh uh-huh so i guess it doesn't have anything that like rubs oh it has uh motion sensing aim assist on pc it has uh yeah gyro calibration no dead zone mode yeah, so so the 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 sticks is the big deal with this one. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what the Next hall sensing situation you. is. Next time I see you, I will remember to give this to you so you can try it. Hall sensing electromagnetic joystick to solve drifting ultimately for its contactlessness, smoothness, high accuracy and no worn out advantages compared to old carbon film joysticks on all other controllers and also total new button for its high accuracy, super durable up to 50 million times anti stuck, anti disconnection advantages compared to regular conductive rubber pad buttons. So how does the how do the buttons feel? Take it back out of the box. Oh, they felt fine. Do uh, they feel like an Xbox controller? Or... Yeah, feel like an Xbox controller. I would say like the the shoulder buttons they they depress pretty deeply, like towards the edge. Mm-hmm. So that kind of feels weird. But other than that, it feels like an Xbox controller. And the thumbsticks feel fine, even though they're not rubbing. There, there. It is. It does feel pretty smooth, mm-hmm. like not where like the stick meets the plastic, but like beneath that. If that makes yeah. sense. So, so the whole deal is that like on normal joysticks, uh, there's like a there's like a bowl, and there's something constantly rubbing up on the bowl, and in this case, uh, nothing's rubbing up on anything. Yeah. So, uh, I'll show you the joystick itself. That is good. Maybe they included a joystick, like a stick box. Maybe they included the stick box yeah. so that we can see what's different about it. Can you I mean, see not the... that I would know with, without having another stick box. To compare can you to. see the ball on the inside? Uh, no, not really. Let me see. It looks like it's like... Hold on. Yeah, do one of them. Do one of them jobs. Yeah. Do a little focus thing. There we go. It looks exactly the same as a regular one. Oh, wait, let me see the blue yeah, side. It... The blue side. Yeah, it looks exactly the same. <laughs> it also comes with like this like gray part as well. I don't know what that does. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll have to take it apart and, and look around. Yeah. 
Uh, anyway, now we're going to talk to you guys real quick. Yes. Starting with anyone who left a comment on last week's episode over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfman Podcast. Uh, just like uh, Kunal Nadkarni did. Can we please talk about the Comixology app and provide some good alternatives? Comixology was such a great app keeping my books and comics separately until Amazon interfered. I wish they come up with a good solution. Uh, still sucks. Still bad. Still missing some comics from my Comixology library. Comixology was the perfect opportunity to be the comic book app, and they, they fucked it yeah. up in a lot and of ways. Then, but, like, it was fine for years, and Amazon's like, hey, make it like Kindle, because <laughs> we own you. Um, In terms of, like, alternatives, there really aren't any great ones. I know you can buy like graphic novels from like the Apple bookstore or like Google play. Uh, I don't have much experience with that. I've dabbled a little bit in on the iTunes store, but it's, you know, it is what it is. Comixology really was the perfect app, not just because you can get comics because of the way they cataloged it and the way they organized everything and the way like you can subscribe to monthly issues. And, you know, it, on the front page, it would say what you're currently reading, uh, what you just bought or what you have downloaded. Uh, and and most importantly, it remembered what you read and where you were in your books from device to device. So if I start reading on my iPad and I you know leave the house and I want to start reading again on my phone, it would just know. But it doesn't fucking do that anymore. Did, did they like fire like a bunch of people at Comixology? Because like that's the only excuse I could think of where they would have... Uh a reason to roll comiXology into Kindle. I don't think so. I did just see that like the founder and CEO of comiXology is now doing something else mm. at Amazon. He has a new job there. So maybe that has something to do with it. Interesting. <laughs> Either way, your shit's broken. And it wasn't before. Uh, Rinkashikachi says, uh, I almost had a stroke with this. RDR2, not R2D2. Mm. RD, Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the best games ever made. Stick with your platformers, please. I'm more than happy to stick with my platformers. You can stick with your shitty westerns if you want to. <laughs> uh, uh, also, Joshua says, as a truck driver, I always, quote, listen to your podcast while driving interstates so I definitely would enjoy a solid audio-only podcast from you guys. Joe Rogan is a great example. He always stops his guests to break down visual de derails for listeners. Thanks for the reply on air. Made my night run from Cali to Washington. Uh, yeah, we. I, I did. I did make an attempt today to better describe some things. Yeah. Um. Yeah, will, it's hard try. because you know. This show starts off as a visual show. Yeah. You know, as we're doing it right now, we're doing it visually. Right. And I, I think sometimes we just forget that tomorrow it becomes an audio show. As well. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely something we need to personally, we need to do better on. And it, it is a continuing fight that we will fight uh, until we are we are bought by Spotify for as much money as Joe Rogan. <laughs> yes. And I won't uh, smoke pot with anybody to do it. Yo, I will say I listened to Joe. I was I listened to Mr. Beast on Joe Rogan podcast. It was a great podcast, but um, surprisingly, there was an opportunity for Joe Rogan to ask Mr. Beast if he's ever done mushrooms, and he didn't take that opportunity. I was shocked. <laughs> but um, Mr. Beast talks about how he likes youtube for its discoverability and he's gonna constantly grow on youtube and he's like yeah if you leave that platform it'd be fucking stupid why would you ever want it and that's exactly what joe rogan did he left <laughs> he left it for spotify and you can hear joe rogan like dying a little bit inside being like yeah. oh, yeah, maybe that was such oh, a good yeah. idea even though he yeah, made out with a lot good. of money he is losing yeah. the audience he could have had but yeah it was a great podcast i recommend anybody yeah. interested in youtube to listen to that uh conversation um, OG87 says, also, Will doesn't like Red Dead Redemption 2. 
just because it gave you more for your money and didn't push you to do all the extra side stuff like most games force you to. I wish more games did this. Personally, I played every corner of Red Dead Redemption 2, but I was happy it was my own choice to do stuff and, and not forced. It is nice that like they don't force you to do everything, but at the same time, like it just it feels like a waste to have these systems in there that like don't really you don't really do anything with. You know, just because a game adds a lot of content and it gives you more for your money doesn't necessarily make it a better game than, you know, something that's shorter. You know, let's not forget Zack Snyder's Justice League is four hours long. Not better than a lot of movies that are a lot shorter. I would argue the problem with Red Dead Redemption 2 is that uh, it, it's there's moments in the game where the uh, the, the 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 objective that that progresses the story isn't clearly defined. So it makes you feel yeah. like you should do this weird side stuff that isn't very yes. fun or good. Yes. A, a problem with a game like Red Dead 2 that has a lot of bloat is that it distracts from the main overall experience mm -hmm. that the game actually wants you to have. Mm -hmm. So instead of like going on this journey with Arthur trying to, you know, figure out that maybe the life he leads isn't all it's cracked up to be and him slowly dying of tuberculosis, instead you got to go off and do all this all this random busy work mm -hmm. that doesn't really amount to much in the grand scheme of things. And yeah. like forcing you to keep track of all these things that ultimately don't matter in the end. Yeah, with Red Dead Redemption One, from what I remember, it's just it's very clearly defined what was going to advance the story mm -hmm. until yeah. you get to the farm, and then it was like weird busy work. <laughs> but but yeah. like it, it was weird busy work, but then ultimately by the end you realize that served a point. Right. Right. So, uh, disco disco stew. Magoo says, I enjoyed the WWF slash Vince McMahon reference at the start. Nice. I it was over my head. I didn't get it. I don't even remember making a reference to <laughs> Vince McMahon or the WWF. All uh, right. We're on. We're in the chat real quick. They're asking if yes. we've ever done mushrooms. No. No. Uh, no, no drugs here. I'm no. so sorry, guys. <laughs> I like Bob's hair when it's down. Okay. Here it is. Welcome. There you go. Oh, so luxurious. Oh, thanks. Oh, shucks. <laughs> uh, okay. I just I had a question, but then I lost it because now you're all writing in the chat. Oh, good, Tech Natter good. says the reference was because you said it was me, Austin. Oh, it was I me did the reference. Along. Yes, it was me. It was me, Austin. <laughs> Did you have pie uh, yesterday? No. I fucked up. I Yeah, I forgot it was that day. Uh, Wildfire says, I think there's a free version of that racing game. What racing game? What are you talking about? Chocobo GP? Well, they said that there's a... Um, a mobile version. A mobile version in Japan only. Yeah. So maybe if they bring that over to the US, maybe that will be the free version. In which case, definitely don't buy it on Switch. Retro Pete asks, where did you get the 8-Bit Do Arcade Pad? I need it. I got it from uh, Amazon, but it's been heavily modified. So uh, I, re I recommend watching my videos on it if you want to know how to modify mm -hmm. it the way that I have it. Um, anyway... Aluabix says, I always tune in on the Twitch stream, listen on iTunes, and then watch again on YouTube to get all the visual cues. There you go. That's how you do it. Be, everyone be more like Luabix. Just keep watching our stuff. Edward Bova, Reggie fils recently interview from South by Southwest with Bloomberg's Emily Chang, had a few interesting comments regarding the metaverse along with his time at GameStop, and after the interview, he also signed a fan's Mother 3 cartridge. And then he links a YouTube video. I don't know. That sounds like a friggin' headline. Uh, so I, I didn't see all of it, but I did hear that um, he, Reggie is specifically not a fan of Facebook's idea of the metaverse. Oh, I did. He doesn't hear think that, yes. Facebook. Um, basically, he doesn't think Facebook is the right company to do a metaverse. He thinks Roblox and Fortnite are closer to what a metaverse can and should be. I think VR chat 
is the closest. I I I think that um, he, part of what Reggie said about Meta is that uh, they don't build technologies; they steal them from other companies or buy them from other companies. Like like it's with true. like with Insta like Snapchat, they couldn't buy yeah. Snapchat, so they just stole the idea and put it in Instagram, and then that was it. Yes, uh, WhatsApp they just bought Instagram, they just bought Oculus, they yeah. just bought. Um, so creating the metaverse uh, doesn't. I, it, 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 if they are building it, it probably won't be successful. Um, yeah. However, VR chat seems to be everything that the metaverse is trying to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like everybody's initial thought of VR chat is like the weird cringe stuff that goes on in VR chat, but really it's just mm -hmm. dudes hanging out and talking to each other. And it's exactly like what they are trying to market the metaverse to be. This interview also had Reggie talking about uh, how he left the board at GameStop, and I think it was because they had no clear direction. They, they, they were like, uh, they were like, we have a plan, but we don't want to tell you because it's gonna uh, uh, people are gonna steal our ideas. And Reggie was like, okay, that means you don't have a plan, and I'm out. <laughs> I heard that he left because he didn't get along with the other people on the board, but I might have read that uh, article wrong. I mean, it's th th both can be true. Yes. Uh, Kotaku's headline, Reggie kicked too much ass for the GameStop suits. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. Um, Lubick says, maybe the real metaverse is the friends we made along the way. Okay. All right, dude. Yeah. Uh, Retro Pete says, what was the first game you 100%ed? I might say Mario 64. I don't think I've ever 100%ed a game. I mean, Sonic 3. Maybe. I don't know if I 100%ed I... that without a game genie, though. Before, yeah. At least before I did, but I don't know if I did it before Mario 64. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I don't play really to 100%. I play to experience, you know, the overall... Yeah, uh, you know the story mode basically, and if I like the game, I'll go back and play more of it. But even like, you know, the Arkham games, I collect all the stupid Riddler trophies. But even that's not hundred percent in the game. There's more mm. to do after that, and after that, all I'm right. like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> uh, all right, I've really got to pee. So yeah, I'm so going to go ahead and say that we're done here. Thanks for hanging out. All right. Thank, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh, I am going to try to stream more because, uh, I, I'm on a, I'm, I, 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 you might notice in the bottom left corner, there's a little sub thing. It says how many subs we have. We have 620. That's all you people who either subscribe with your money or you use your free Amazon prime sub. Mm -hmm. If we, it will listen to me. Okay. I'm if we can maintain 750. So right now we have 620. Mm -hmm. If we can maintain right. 750 until November, when I move from this apartment, I can buy a Lamar Zoko. That's the goal. <laughs> so I need all you motherfuckers out there with Amazon Prime to come over here and drop your free $3 so that your boy over here could buy a nice espresso machine. <laughs> anyway. There you go. Uh, like just like just like gold uh, goldfish goldfish just in the chat. Thank you very much. Uh, anyway, right now go watch AJ. Uh, he is streaming Smash, uh, and he usually plays with the viewers. So go over there and go beat him up. Uh, and then I will see you guys. Uh, I got a lot to do, but I do want to stream a lot. So hopefully <laughs> tomorrow. Who knows? I don't know. Thank you for being here. Goodbye. Bye.